For an age and an age, the House Ashmore stood proud and strong. And yet, there is no family tree that does not wither, that does not burn. Look at that. That was cool. Yeah! Are we frozen? Are we frozen? We're frozen. We're frozen. frozen. And we're frozen. frozen. And All right. The party house is frozen right, All right. right when we saw that work. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. Okay. Uh, okay. What do we do? Can they hear us? Can we be heard at least? Yeah, yeah. We can we definitely can hear you. Hear you. Well, well, what, what do we do? Nice frozen yeah. picture. I guess it's, um, uh, it's yeah. yeah. Give me one minute. All right, what? everybody. Uh, well, for everybody watching, welcome, welcome to uh, welcome to the stream. There they go. Oh, now, there they now are. You're not frozen. Hey, yeah. Great. Oh, I better right. just move back to the the fancy camera. It'll work. Yeah. No, that's not. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our second stream of our Cinderella's Castle uh, Kickstarter campaign, exploring the lands that are. Um, so uh, we. First off, I just want to thank everybody who's watching this stream, everyone who has supported this campaign, everyone who has contributed, everyone who has shared, everyone who's watching right now. This campaign has uh, exceeded our wildest expectations for the response. Uh, we did not expect to be getting this much funding this quickly. It is uh, fabulous. It's uh, humbling. It's inspiring. We're so grateful to all of you, and we're we are so uh, inspired to make this the best possible show that it can be. Um, so thank you so much for helping us get this far, and let's see how far we can get. Because, like we always say, the more money we raise, the uh, better the production can be. But uh, you know, what are we at now? Those what are we at now? Yeah. Let's take a look. Ten, I believe. Nice. Yes, right now we are currently at uh, three, ten, three ten one seventy five, one seventy six, three ten one ninety. Very good. Okay, so it's going we'll just up. Count it in real time. The entire yeah, yeah. the whole time. This will be the whole stream. It's just us <laughs> looking at the number, reading what the current number is. Um, so. Uh, so here we are today on this stream, the Exploring the Lands That Are. We're going to talk a little bit more about the show, about the world that the show takes place in. As you'll see, I have some uh, puppetry little things back here so that we can take a look at uh, these puppet mechanics, learn a little bit more about the creatures that inhabit the lands that are and the puppets that will be featured in the show. Talk about our history with puppetry because if you you know if you know star kid you know that we have uh, a history of having puppets in the shows and um so we'll talk about kind of the evolution of that we'll talk a little bit about um you know what it's like making one of these shows give you a little kind of back behind the scenes peek at what exactly we're going to be using this money for uh because we you know have 310 uh, $310,205 dollars thus far um and where is all that money going to go to believe it or not it's already spent all of that money is already <laughs> it's already promised out you know <laughs> so we so these these shows are are pretty expensive and they get more expensive all the time so uh inflation. We, yeah. <laughs> real time inflation yes real time inflation uh so we'll take a look at that and we'll also kind of go through our reward tiers talk about that and one of the big things that we're going to be doing on this stream very exciting is we are going to give everyone the opportunity to unlock the song demos the song demos that jeff has put together for this show these song demos are amazing jeff 
has written an amazing score of music for the show that I'm very excited for everyone to hear. Uh, you've kind of already heard um, little snippets of the of the song Castle on a Hill, which is the opening number of the show. And that'll be the first song that, that we'll unlock. We'll talk a little bit about these songs as we unlock them, and then we will play the demo for you. So um, we're going to be playing those demos as we hit certain benchmarks, certain funding benchmarks. So uh, right now we're at, we're going to kind of come up with these on the fly, uh, see how far we can get. We have a goal of getting ourselves to our silver tier budget today. And who knows, maybe even beyond. We'll see what happens. So right now the Kickstarter uh, total is good. Joey's here. Sorry. Oh, come on. Oh. All right. So, um, so right now the, the Kickstarter. <laughs> right now the Kickstarter. Hold on, here he is. Oh, there he is. Hello, Joey. Joey. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Uh, we're gonna have um, we're gonna have different uh, cast and crew members weave in and out throughout the stream. So everyone, pay, uh, uh, keep your eyes peeled because you'll see some uh, people yeah. that you know and love. Um, so, so the first song demo we're gonna unlock is Castle on a Hill, and when is that? When can we play that? And we're gonna play the whole song. We're gonna play the you the whole song, um, and this is going to be as soon as the Kickstarter campaign reaches, as soon as the total reaches, let's say, three hundred and twelve thousand yeah! dollars. So let's okay. let's see how quickly we can get the total up to three twelve. Right now we're at three ten. 400 so really we're only what sixteen hundred dollars away yeah so let's see how let's see how it goes if you're watching right now and you have not get, uh, given to the campaign yet and you're and you're and you've been on the fence now's the time to do it so uh get over there onto the kickstarter page uh which you can there's a link below in this video uh, you can get over there and do all of that. Hello, Joey. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I, right now, let's uh, just first and foremost, let's go and see who, who do we have on the stream thus far. So Party House, who's over at the Party House right now? Me. We got I'm Kurt. I'm Kurt. I'm here. All right. Kurt Mega. Kurt. Oh, we're going couch. I'm Jeff. Uh, Blim here. I'm here and present. I'm all Paul right. Gabriel. And I'm John Madison. And I'm Joey Richter. Yay, we did it. Present in the All house. right. All right, yeah. Oh, Some people, it. it's just a bunch Woo! of guys. Right. Oh. It's the dude frat house over here. Mariah's yeah, all it is. Oh, the boy, yeah. That are a yeah. Our yeah. Our yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, who's, uh, on, who's on our way? Mariah? Mariah. Mariah Rose Faith Casillas is on her way. So that'll be good. Um, and... Uh, so what, what was I going to say? Yeah, somebody in the chat said, is this actually live? And it is. I <laughs> uh, I wish that it wasn't. It would be way less stressful if it wasn't. Uh, yeah. But it is live. You, is there is, there's going to be one live stream over the course of this month that is pre-recorded, but you're going yeah, to have to figure out. We're not going to tell you one You'll guess which one it is. <laughs> one of them is pre-recorded. Maybe, maybe it's this. You'll have to see. Yeah, maybe it's the one we already did. Who knows? Um, <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I, no, this is not pre-recorded. We just hit uh, three hundred and ten, eight fifty. So now we're uh, less than twelve hundred dollars away from unlocking the first uh, song demo, "Castle on a Hill," which um, will, as we unlock these songs, will tell, will give you a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a pre uh, preamble kind of give you some context to know what is going on with the song and then we will uh play the song it's um, a pretty yeah. vague title it's like you don't know what the song's about okay we're we're gonna get there like pretty quick i think um, oh yes we, we're we're um we're about we're less than do 400 dollars away right now. do we want to talk a little bit about like the process of getting this opening song like what yes. we asked of jeff and what jeff what Jeff yeah. did? Yeah, go for it. What Jeff did? <laughs> what, what did you do? Yeah. 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 What did you do? Well, no, it is kind of true. We were done. <laughs> they, it, I didn't. It, we were searching for an open num opening number for a few tries. It took me a few tries. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you have other versions you want to play? Yes. Well, one of them is in the show at a different point. Yeah. Yeah. So when we were going into this into this show, uh, we wanted there to be some sort of kind oh, of. We just hit it. <laughs> we just hit it. Okay, great. Yeah. So, so we're gonna play it real soon. Let's give you. And then we'll talk about it after. And then we'll talk okay. about it afterwards. Right. Okay, Here so this is a song. Wait, uh, sorry, one second. Oh wait, I went. I'm a. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is a song that is, um, it is the opening of the show, sung by the narrator and the cast, and it is about you will see there a, a castle on a hill. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. To the future, know. we wanted to future proof things to go like basically. We, when we were writing the show, we said, Jeff, make it a theme song, make it an opening theme song for the for the for the whole thing. Amazing. And, um, yeah, yeah. We gave we gave Jeff a few criteria. We said, We want one, the beginning to be mysterious, 
And then we said, too, it's just, it uh, should be very theme songy. And then we said, three, it should incorporate something to do with. We said it would be great if you could get the word castle in there. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how. Check, and then we said, check. and then we said, four, it needs to get you pumped. Yeah. And so I think Jeff did a, a, a great yeah. job. He did, he hit yeah. it all. And uh, I love how anime opening it is. Yeah. Give yeah. Jeff one a target, he won't miss. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I like, I see it, if this were the animated movie, I see the narrator just hanging into castles, peering into castle windows. He's just, he, just, he he's loves castles. Be, he's pretending to be a painter. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's in a stockade <laughs> going, <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> Yeah. I, uh, I love that. We'll try and do that. Maybe Please. in the show, Jeff, uh, we'll get you a bunch of hats and costumes. So can I be, can you're, I be you're, harnessed so you're I can sweeping. be... <laughs> yes. yeah. You're sweeping, and then you turn and start to, narr- to narrate. The best would, yeah, the best would be, it's like the the scene is happening, there's a character in the background, turns around, it's Jeff. There, Jeff is, <laughs> and all these different costumes, weaving in and out, that'd be great. We'll try yeah. and do that. Constantly being drug out of the castle. There's a guard who absolutely hates yeah, him. He's you get out of here! He's constantly getting kicked out. Get out of this! Oh, this yeah. fucking guy again. Yeah. Um, you know, I I've seen some uh <laughs> some Stop stuff uh, in the chat saying yeah. is Jeff a puppet uh in the show? Uh n- no, I think Jeff is gonna be Jeff in the show. Yeah, yeah. We're uh we're gonna. It's gonna be a challenge for us to finish the few, the 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 puppets that are in it. We don't know. We don't know how many more puppets we want to add to it. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. Unless we hit that yeah. goal budget. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, so let's uh let's really quick set our set our next goal so we know what we're working towards. So, oh, what yeah. do we think? Do we want to do it at at three fifteen? Yeah, that's a nice round number. Okay, so as soon as we hit uh, three fifteen on the total of the on the Kickstarter total, we are going to play our next demo, and this is a song that no one has heard yet in the in the chat. None of the audience has heard it. Oh, hello! Look, Hi, it's here. Hello. Hi. Oh, Hi. hello! Hi, Mariah. Hello, Nick. Hey. Hi. Yeah. That was her. And that's it. Right. Okay. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Right. And that was Mariah. You're welcome. Um, well, so, wait, uh, they, they asked in the chat too, who is that? Who's the guy behind you then? Oh, who's, oh, that? Oh, who's that? That yeah. that that puppet? We're gonna see. We're gonna see. We're work. We're working on things. We don't want to give everything away. All right. <laughs> I mean, that's right. a real guy. That could. Be, that just looks like a real guy behind you working. Yeah, just a little guy right there. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. This. Is that's a, how Nick makes that puppet. Yeah. puppets. Is that guy just yeah. makes them for? That's how Nick makes rent. Is he rents his place out to that other puppet? To that guy. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah. So we'll 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 take a look. And yeah, I don't know if you can see this, but I've got some, you know, I've got several different puppety things that we can take a look at later. Um, but um, yeah, so as soon as the as we hit three fifteen, we'll play our next song demo. And um, Matt, this is your favorite song in the show, right? Yeah, this this upcoming song is is my favorite song in the whole show. It's great. I we and we're gonna order? not necessarily. Not- Okay. No, we are not necessarily going to order. We we change the order of some of the songs, gotcha. uh, and we some of the songs we can't play the ent- the whole song. We have to cut them mm-hmm. down or cut mm-hmm. out certain lyrics, or because like, of spoilers. We then, because oh, of spoilers. Right, we don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we didn't want this stream to just be okay. Now you've basically been told and heard the whole show um so we're not playing every single song uh we've got nine songs to unlock and they're out of order 
and they um and we've removed certain sections of these songs and certain lines and things so as not to spoil for you what's how that many, yeah. how many total songs are in the show 30. Five. 30 35 30 30 40. Oh. So, uh we're we'll thinking, see we'll see oh, okay, we're, okay we'll see we're still working on it um yeah. on the you know there are things because you also go what counts as a song does a does a reprise count as a as a different song sometimes so. yes yeah. so uh you know it's kind of flexible so we are right now it's not it's not 35. Um, I would say anytime there's a joke in the show, because jokes have a, you jokes know, have a, a melody and a it, timing yeah. and a mm-hmm. music to them, that jokes that's count. a song. Jokes, yeah. count. jokes count as a song. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, words or music. Yeah, words so, like, are lyrics. There you go. You know, there are um, several also, thousand songs. Also, there's a music yeah. to costumes, too. This yeah, is the bit house, yeah. by the way. We do bits here. There's I need it. Music to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so we're less than a thousand away from unlocking that song. Wow. We're gonna definitely have to uh, raise these uh, these numbers because we're gonna play all of our songs in, in, be done in the in first in the first twenty minutes. So we will is try. There and... like a, is there like a goal today? Like, or is it like let's get to goal budget? So... No, we're we're not sure. We're gonna see how far we can get. We would love to cross the barrier of our silver budget, which is three twenty five. Oh so, um, but I think that we can get higher than that today. So, um, we'll, we'll definitely see how we, how we do, but the next one is happening in, a, in less than $800. So if you're watching and you would like to hear this next song, if this at, song will cost $800, it'll cost you $800 to hear it. Um, and the price is going down. The song, it's crazy. Get it now. Cause the, wait, the price is going down on this song. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now it costs less than $700. Yeah, this so is crazy. There you go. Yeah. Um, great. So, um, so yeah, so we'll be doing that. And then along the way, we'll be talking about various aspects of the production. Mariah, how are you doing today? I'm the best I've ever been in my life. Wow. Nice. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What's the secret? I've just been doing, being like my little kid self and hanging out and doing what I love and hanging out with my friends. I'd like to make what? a quick shout out to Lindsay who helped me cook. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Lindsay's oh. here in the party house today and that's a big reason yeah. why I'm so good right now. Because there is a piece of food that yeah, I can not see the table, but it's yeah. beautiful. It's so nice. I love very much. Thank you. It's amazing. Uh, Thank you. What kind, of, what kind of food you got over there? Oh, that's. <laughs> I've been waiting for somebody to ask that. That's my so favorite much. question in the world. Um, so okay, first of all, here? first of all, we've got two types of popovers, both savory and sweet. These are brown that's butter, brown say. butter, uh, gluten-free, gluten-free, brown butter, cinnamon sugar covered popovers. We got that going on. Oh wow! And we've got two types of sandwiches. <laughs> this is kind of a lunch stream. So we've got chicken salad and tuna salad sandwiches. They're really good. And we've got they're very good. Okay, I'll show them. Over the plates. We got time. Um, all right, here are the gluten-free. The things. foods that, that are. Heavy, heavy, heavy. <laughs> yeah. the Exploring the foods. These are up. the gluten-free sandwiches, oh, yeah. both chicken salad and tuna salad. <laughs> They're homemade, and the and the tuna is wild caught. Important to John yeah. caught it. He I caught it. Tuna. I, I caught the tuna. Oh, um, we've got. Uh, wow, wow look at that. Uh, Do you want to? Intro these. Oh yeah, and these are the <laughs> these are yeah. the chicken salad and tuna salad sandwiches on challah bread, not gluten free, right. but oh. on like a marble plate that weighs like twenty pounds. <laughs> these are from Safi's, and uh, this this was baked this morning. So um, really there you stuff. go. Songs get cheaper by the minute. Yeah, we're we're less than five hundred away from the next song, and um... well, that's nice for everyone. I okay. Uh, okay. I ate a lunch before not knowing. These blueberry blueberries. Oh, oh my god. Blueberry. Oh my, oh my god. god. Can I try one of those right now? Yeah. We got yeah. somebody yeah. coming yeah. in. Yeah. Here right we now. go. Take off those mittens and hold them. Oh. Hello, Angela. Hello, Hello. 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 Hi, Angela. Hello, Angela. Oh, oh. oh. Hi. What a way to go. I have no voice, so I'm supposed to be on vocal. Angela, Angela we save your voice for the show. Save, save your voice for, the show. for tomorrow, please. Oh my god, tomorrow, yeah. We have a show tomorrow. I, 
Okay, so I'm going to try and attempt to be quiet this whole time. But I, I had too much FOMO just watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Save that voice. Please stop talking. All right. So um, here's Save Angela Giratana. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we've got a lot of our uh, we got a lot of our cast members coming in and out today. We've got Angela, who we now it's been announced for a long time, uh, is playing the stepmother, the troll stepmother in in the show, and Mommy. we're very excited for that. Yeah, um, I, woke up, I woke up sounding like a troll. <laughs> she's getting into character already. She's <laughs> chomping at the bit. Um, we've got Mariah Rose. Saturday What's that? Angela and her thing said, this is me on a Saturday morning, am I right? Yeah, yeah it's a Saturday morning. Here we are. Yeah. Wow, full circle. There you go. Guys, this muffin. I'm going to get one. Uh, um, so good. Guys, so good. Mariah is playing Putris, the one of the troll stepsisters. That's me. I'm excited to see Angela and, and Mariah play mother-daughter. <laughs> yeah. Me too. <laughs> It's going to be real good. Yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. I think the trolls are going to be a lot of fun to do. I think uh -huh. so, too. So I'm excited for that. Um, we got Paul. Hello, Paul. For those hey, of you... Hello. Paul is uh, is a producer on the show and the stage manager. So we're very lucky to have Paul. Very excited. We got John... The video just came out not too long ago of John is playing Sir Hopalot, the frog, the frog knight. And then his squire, played by Joey Richter, Crumb, the mouse squire. There he is. We've got uh, Kurt Mega, who's playing the role of Taddeus, the prince's uh, uh, chamberlain and, and servant. The servant um, is begrudging servant, his long-suffering servant. And then Jeff Blim, it's already been announced. The video is coming. Jeff Blim as the narrator, the storyteller, the one who, which I think is fitting. Yeah, I'm looking look forward to it. <clears throat> yeah, yes, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so we're we're about two hundred and five dollars away from unlocking this Got next it. demo. Um, we're going to be unlocking demos throughout this whole stream. Um, we've got uh, eight more demos to unlock. So this next one uh, is Matt Lang's favorite song from the show. I think everyone will like it. And it's also, it's, it's also oh, it's, John's favorite. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, can you tell us, like, can we get a little hint? Intro to it, maybe? Yeah, yeah. This is going to be, um, this is an early song in the show. This, because um, basically what, uh, in, in our version of, of the story, Ella, is um ella ashmore who is our cinderella she is a you know she's a prisoner in her own home uh the the stepmother has come in and taken over the thing and what nobody in in town knows is that the stepmother and her daughters are in fact trolls but because <laughs> they are they, through through ancient troll magic the stepmother is able to skin women take their skins and make a skin suit so that this, this giant troll let me get let me get that troll yeah. get that troll big sorry <laughs> so this is so yeah. imagine this big this big huge troll kind of creature then squeezes inside of Angela's skin and uh then parades around the town posing as a human when in fact she she despises humans, she hates all of humankind, uh, but she has to hide because trolls are vile. They are vile creatures who are hated by humans, hunted. Uh, so this troll is in disguise. This troll has taken over the has taken over this house, and in order to sur survive and keep control of this house, they have to hide and convince the entire town that th that. The stepmother is a human, and to aid in that deception, she has convinced the whole town that Ella is crazy. So don't believe anything she says. If she starts talking about how I'm a monster, isn't that isn't she just insane? Um, gay sort of thing. Gaslight girl boss. Gay, 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 gay gaslight girl boss. Yeah. 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 
um, so this next song that we are going to be playing is an early song in the show that is uh, sung by the narrator, the townspeople, and Ella herself. And it is kind of a song about how the whole town views Ella Ashmore. Yeah. And I'll and read a little and I'll read a little something before we we're less than a hundred dollars away from that from revealing that song. This is a cheap song, man. Cheap. Everybody's getting a getting a, a deal. Yes, it's oh. it's kind of like Bell. It's kind of like the did song you actually Bell. say? Did you say what this song is though? Yeah. No, we right. haven't we haven't oh, okay. said what it's called yet though. Oh, okay. Um. I don't know what it's called. Is that what were you gonna read, Nick? I I have the book here, the Cinderella oh, special yeah? book. This um is featured in the Kickstarter video, and it's also uh one of the prizes somebody has purchased this already so Ooh. that you, if you are watching and you have purchased this this is the one that you're getting and uh in the video you'll see that the the book opens to a page wow. here that is actually the opening narration okay. of the show so i was going to maybe just read this opening <laughs> narration to kind of set up the kind of set up the song because it kind of has to do with it and it'll give people a little glimpse at you know <laughs> the story. Just like and all the right we're we're 70 dollars away is, the, is so. the novelization going to have more scenes than that weren't um, featured in the show? Uh, uh this is a it has actually has way less way less okay, <laughs> way cool, less. Cool. for you way to create your own story I see, it's, got I see. One, it's got one page in it and if you and if you bought this, you can just if you want to tear out this page and throw it away, feel free. No. If you want to yeah. tip off these letters and just use it as a nice notebook, it's yeah, yours. Go ahead. So, yeah. yours, so, you know, <laughs> we'll send it to you like this. You can do whatever you want with it. Okay. Um, uh, Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Oh, Twenty dollars. Oh, Everyone oh, up there pledge by one dollar. Yeah, give yeah. Jeff really dollars to write a song. Jeff, you're you're tripping. Tw we are Twenty dollars. Uh, uh, this is not what. It's not what it means. All that work for $20. That, that's not what it means. All right, $20. we get it. It's a cheap ass song. Yeah. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It's our cheap ass song, Boo. <laughs> I love Ryan John's head's just barely floating. We're just <laughs> like little Budo and Sister. Oh, okay, okay. We, we did it. Got it. We, we did, did it. it. Play it, play it now. Play it now. Uh, here, okay. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start out by reading this little piece of narration first. All right, this is this is going to be at the beginning of the show, so spoiler alert. For an age and an age, the house Ashmore stood proud and strong, and yet there is no family tree that does not wither, that does not burn. When the flames of ruination swept through the Ashmore clan, they were consumed like so much kindling. The Lady Ashmore was burned at the stake for the crime of witchcraft. Her lord husband died of consumption, they say, not a fortnight after he'd taken a second wife. The house Ashmore was left, poetically enough, in ashes. The last flickering cinder was Ella, the lord and lady's only daughter, who, if peasant gossip could be trusted, had been driven mad with grief. And so this Ooh. next song is going to be, uh, it is a song sung by the townspeople and by the narrator and by Ella herself. It is a song called Cursed Crazy. I haven't even listened to this, so very exciting. Hold on to your butts. Hold on. My butt. Cinderella, Ella, is she down on her love? Or did witchcraft hang her head low? The towny folks that won't get close, her hair matted down. And she prefers herself locked in her home. Fresh as a daisy, mysterious ways. Ever since mom and dad left this plane. Star raving lady, reclusive her days. Was she hearing all that they say? She 
covered in filth It's the remains of the house of ash The guilt she's got, she's overwrought that paranoid look Like the town is talking behind her back Star gravy manic Lock her away Destined to join the mother at the stake Weird and eccentric, completely estranged Her stepmother must be a saint or Curse crazy, you know you don't wanna know it When fighting your demons alone You know you're fucked up, baby That silly couldn't be sick Whether you want it or not, oh you are Curse crazy, deader than mangy Shell of my former self Seems lately, just maybe, the outer world is a spell. Cinderella, Ella, is she so fucking nuts? That chivalry is all but dead. Cast this life, cast our lives, these skin walking crooks. Is it too much just to lend her a hand? Verging on panic, a cat that is straight. If it's a milk, it'll never tame So damn dramatic, completely insane Look at the town, she's left in the rain Cursed and crazy Jeff, what was your inspiration for this song? Uh, uh, there's a song I heard in a car. I've totally forgotten the band or the name of it, but I was like, it should vibe like this. Off. Imagine Dragons. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, and then, then there was the curse or crazies in the script, and I pulled that from the script, and then I was off. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's great. I, I think it's great. Um, you'll see in this... Um, in this show, uh, in the song, there were a few little F word uh, drops. So yes, this is a big kid fairy tale. This is a it's fairy the tale. Adult for, tour. This is the adult version. <laughs> um, so uh, it's not your hear. grandmother, Cinderella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could hear that song in a club or something, and I'd be like, it'd fit in. Or driving down the Pacific Coast Highway. Yeah. Yes. Uh, period, Paul. Work. Yeah. yeah. You just like you just broke up. With someone, yeah, and you're like, next whole crazy, crazy person, crazy. There's like tears coming down your like tears of joy, joy. like I'm free, I'm liberated. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, I I love it. I think you've really captured um the vibe of the music that that uh it's so cool and I and I love it so much. When we were working on the show, um, you know, part of the big inspiration for this entire idea where um, things, movies like Labyrinth and The Dark Crystal and sort of this 80s dark fantasy uh, genre. So I think that Jeff has done an incredible job of capturing that vibe that we all kind of remember of that dark 80s fantasy sort of thing while modernizing it and um, just making it so... I think you've done a beautiful job with this show and I... I couldn't be more excited to play more of these song demos, which um, <laughs> let's figure out what the, uh, what the next um, goal is going to be. Do we want to, I, I think 3000 was actually a pretty good round number. Well, of we're already at 316. We're about to hit 316. 316. Do we want to well, do 320? Let's push it. Want to do 320? Let's try it. That's a no, little much, it, don't you think? Three nineteen. That's three eighteen. Three nineteen. Do we want to do three nineteen? Three eighteen. Three eighteen. Three eighteen. Three eighteen. Three eighteen. If you do three eighteen, I won't kill myself later. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll <laughs> here first on the schedule. You have to unmute. <laughs> if it's three thirty, I'll sing the song. 
<laughs> Please no. Don't. Okay, let's let's say it's three eighteen. Right. <laughs> okay. So uh, three eighteen will be uh, three hundred and eighteen thousand will be our next goal to hit. Um, Should we? Uh, so that'll be that'll be that, and that we will we'll say that the next um, that the next song is going to be Ella's "I Want" song. Yeah, her. Ooh. Ooh. I you realize what she wants at this point. <laughs> You have her, her, her kind of I want song, yeah. um, dog, and it's sort it's sort of in towards the beginning of the show, and it's a it's a nice Ella song. Uh, we have Bryce Charles playing the role of Ella oh, Ashmore this time around, <laughs> and uh, Bryce is, as we all know, an amazing vocalist. Ugh, one of my so, favorites in the whole world. Yeah, She's so so good. we're we're very very excited to have um, to have Bryce singing all of these songs and to and i think she's going to bring such an amazing energy to the role and uh she and she's really going to tear it up with all these songs i'm i'm really excited to see it um okay great yes yeah, she's magical all right well, so gotta... at 318 right 318 yeah. is what yeah. you said yeah you said that <laughs> Three so we got we, we no, got about two zero. We got no. about two thousand about okay. two thousand dollars to go. Two thousand. So to go. did we want to talk a little bit about puppetry? Yeah, let's yeah, yeah we do. Okay. A bit about these do, no. do we want to do we want to throw a question to the cast? Yeah. And ask what? Okay, cast. Who here has worked with puppets before? Ah, I don't think. Okay, Every, really, everybody. Okay, what is it like working with puppets? Joy first. Harder than it looks. Fun. Annoying. What do you think? It depends. I mean, we've had multiple different kinds of puppets in shows. You know, we've had like you have ones that require multiple people to, which becomes kind of like a group effort of what it is. I feel like we've also had multiple types of like. Like bug was like a squeezing of a handle, but then you have kind of people, you know, characters where it's more of like your hand is their mouth. Um, but it's very, it's like fun to. It becomes like something in between regular stage performance and like voiceover work, you know, because you're you're realizing how much you need to emote with your voice, but also make sure you're physically doing it. But then you're also matching what you're doing physically with what the puppet is doing to like help clarify what it needs to be. You know, it like helps the audience to be like, oh, I can watch both the person and the puppet and like understand emotionally what's happening. Yeah. Which is, which is great. Mm, duality. You know, that's my experience. It is. That rips. I will say it too, is it's also much harder than you think it would be just because the, the general, like genuine athleticism of having the whole. Yeah. And like, God, stop. Yeah. Like you'd think like, oh, whatever. But after like five minutes when your arm is hurt. Everybody better get their fucking traps. It's it is. for this show. Cause <laughs> you are going to be, you're going to be feeling it all up here. Yeah. Yeah. Angela, <laughs> Mariah, you're going to get ripped doing, doing I'm this one. freaking ready to get you so all, ripped. You, Nick, you, that. you guys are going to look like that one monster <laughs> in SpongeBob. Yeah. Uh, Oh, Larry guy? Lobster. Larry? Big yeah. Larry came around just to put him down. <laughs> Who said I'm not already ripped? Yeah, yeah, period. Yeah, already ripped. <laughs> okay, work. Ripped. Yeah, <laughs> in terms so of fun. size, how, like, what, what kind of varying degrees of sizes will these puppets be? That's like, a good question, gonna... Joey. Um, so One that we, we... won't answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so in, in this show, we have... Um, we have five chief puppet characters uh, in in the show. There there may be some more puppets throughout, but the main five are Sir Hopalot, Crumb, and the three troll the three trolls. Uh, so Sir Hopalot is going to be um, there. There's a little bit of in the even in the Kickstarter video. There is a bit of um, us an early kind of skeleton of Sir Hopalot featured where you can see joey and john uh manipulating the the character that we have thus far um this is uh 
we've been working on his head. Uh, so this is uh, Sir Hapalat's head thus far. Um, so this is a. Uh, That's so this will give a you an idea of kind of like this. Obviously, has no skin. He has no eyeballs. This is a basic understructure for what's going on. So this is going to be kind of the size of Sir Hapalat's head, and he will be able to blink. And his and he has a full. He will have a full body underneath. So this puppet, I would say, is going to be about maybe four feet tall um, in, in the end. And he's uh, going to be, uh, it's going to be sort of um, a hybrid to where it can either be a one-person puppet or a two-person <clears throat> puppet, depending on whether or not someone is going to take over doing Sir Hopalot's, uh right hand. Because, John, you, you're right-handed. I'm. Are you yes, right-handed? Yes. So how these puppets work is that um, John will be manipulating the head with one hand. There will be mechanisms inside the head to allow John to blink the frog. And then he will be the frog's left hand. And then we have a plan to say one of his hands is going to be resting on his belt. But then it will be the ability somebody else can come over and take over. Very similar to the Gollum puppet that we uh, that we did uh, a million yeah. years ago when, when we did the Lord of the Rings show or even, or even some of those puppets from Starship. Uh, we had moments where, uh, two bug could either be a one person or two person or one handed, two handed. Yes, John. I'm, I have a little bit of experience working with puppets. However, I'm really like, one of the things I'm very excited is working with Joey on this and, and, Besties. and like, gleaning as much as i can from his puppet experience yes. i'm very very excited um yes so um so sir hopalot is kind of a bigger puppet crumb is obviously going to be a smaller puppet crumb is going what would you to say a, like yay big yeah about, uh, about like yay big crumb is going to be a hand and rod puppet so joey you will be manipulating right. It's similar to something like Roach from Starship, yeah. as opposed to Bug from Starship. Oh, and here we go. We got James. James. Hey. All right, the prince himself. The prince, the prince himself. The prince has arrived. Um, so yes, yeah, so the puppets are going to be of varying degrees and sizes, and then the and then the you know the big ones are the trolls. So the trolls yeah. are going to be again sort of a of a mixture of things to where at times they will be a one person puppet at times it will be a multiple person puppet mainly with these trolls we are going to concern ourselves with um their faces and their hands uh because this is uh these things are 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 going to be big and kind of suggest size these are going to be things that uh people wear um on sort of like a a backpack that kind of goes up into supporting it so that um, you can have this structure on top of you so that you don't have to lift this thing with your hands. So it's going to be set on your shoulders. Yeah. Did you mention this where it's like, it's kind of like the Dementor puppet from the second, from the sequel? Y yes. Well, yes. Like backpack kind they of were thing. kind of backpack sort of things. They, uh, some people might not even be aware that in a very Potter sequel, there were Dementor puppets because you can't see them on the video. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so dark on the video. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, during the song stutter, uh, there are a bunch of, uh, Dementors that come out and they dance. And we actually had two large Dementor puppets in the background, but, uh, you can hardly see them. So that's, uh, that's our fault. Um, you know yeah. what? Yeah. Well, it's yeah, just absolutely. the cameras at the time. Is that one with you? No, them up. I have a photo. Is that that's what they? Oh, what, okay. Yeah. Back, back <laughs> up. Yeah. What do you know? You can, what do you know? You still can't see them. Yeah, so they were kind of like things that you wore on your on your back and your head. I think that Joey, those ones were actually attached to a helmet. 
that you wore Whoa. like a bicycle helmet that rested on your head that went up into a hump that was in the Dementor's oh, back. Whoa. These ones will... <laughs> this is Darren when he chipped his tooth on the bagel. Oh, I remember <laughs> that! I remember that. What? What did he chip on the bagel? D Darren, oh, during oh. Yeah, Harry Potter's sequel, uh, Darren was eating a bagel. He bit into a soft bagel, and it broke his tooth. Uh, yeah. It broke his front tooth. Awesome. And um, it was days before the show, he had to have some kind of emergency procedure done to get the tooth okay. to get a uh, thing Bonded into fixing to yeah so there oh, you go um so, anyways. so so yes so anyway just to remind everybody we have a goal of of 318 uh so we are about we're less than 1300 dollars away from playing the next song demo and right now we're talking a little bit about puppetry um, so, uh, the, those, uh, the trolls are going to be kind of the big ones. Um, you know, we have a long history with puppets in Starkid. Uh, you know, like, like, uh, we've said before, a gigantic influence on, you know, us as creators are things like Jim Henson and the Muppets and Labyrinth was one of our favorite movies growing up. So we've always loved the idea of puppets. <laughs> and we would and we they've been in it since the very beginning um even prior to the first harry potter show that we did we did a um the first show that that uh we were kind of made and directed was actually the hobbit it wasn't even the lord of the rings it was the hobbit and we made some puppets for the mm -hmm. hobbit where we made a smog we made a small smog puppet yeah yeah, he was he was a dragon that was built out of balsa wood and fabric. Dragon. And so he was like a little hand puppet. Yes. Or like you yeah. held him with both hands. Yes. And, and he was pretty he was pretty cool. He was cool. And, and then um, Oh, you're not even Oh, hi. Oh. Oh, lean in. There you go. Oh, Kim there you in. Go. Oh. Hi, Kim. Oh, my God. Hi, Kim. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh no, I ruined the camera. Oh, 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 yes, so we have Kim Whalen. Kim Whalen is playing the fairy queen of sweet dreams, who is kind of our version of the fairy godmother in this story. Um so welcome, Kim. How are you doing? Great. So happy to be here with all these wonderful people and all you wonderful people. This Do you so want exciting. Or tea? Oh my gosh. I'll take tea. Yes. <gasps> yes. Oh my gosh. Hey, John has the best like snack. <laughs> John and Lindsay go like above and beyond with the snacks. We showed you know, everybody. You know, you know, you know, yeah. <laughs> they, they truly deserve their own moment in the spotlight because they're amazing. When uh, uh, when John said he was gonna make snacks, me and Nick said, "Don't nobody's nobody will eat them," because yeah. we always we always used to get people little, little Caesar's pizza. And nobody touched <laughs> it. <laughs> I really need everybody to eat this food because we will. So everybody, this three hour streams, everybody, please. Oh, that's don't worry. Wonderful. Thanks for the love, everyone. Well, 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 and welcome, James. James, and welcome, James. James, how are you doing today? Well, oh, me, me. Uh, yeah. I'm doing great. Uh, uh, yeah, I just offered to have an eating contest if you get us to 327, everybody. Ooh. Yeah, that's 327. right. 327. And I'll eat everything on this table. James going to eat everything on the what table. Everything on the table. What do we have? Um, and I will leave. <laughs> and I want to go <laughs> That's... Hey, uh, Nick, question about those puppets. Are those yeah. like the old ones? Are they in a storage container somewhere? Or where are they? Okay. Matt has them in his uh, basement. They're in my basement. Yeah. They've been in my various... Well, we had them in storage units for years and years. And it... We had so many that it we filled three storage units that each each storage unit cost a couple hundred dollars a month to have and we had three of them so um 
it got very expensive just to store the puppets. But when, but when we moved, uh, when I moved out of Chicago, I finally could have a house with a basement. So they've been in my various basements in yeah. boxes. There were certain puppets that were just too big and uh, I couldn't move. And so unfortunately they don't exist anymore. Um, you remember, remember Pinsir, the giant scorpion? Oh, His body is gone. I took him and I threw him into a dumpster in Chicago. Oh, no. so, uh, have his head? Head? We have his I, head, I think. I have his head, but his body, I threw the whole sad thing into a dumpster. And it was a giant <laughs> scorpion hanging out of the dumpster. <laughs> and... He's free so, now. He's free. Um, yeah. I think uh, there's yeah, there are certain puppets because again, you got to remember these things are over a decade old. Uh, the the dragon from the first Harry Potter show, the dragon that sings la 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 la, he, it is long since dilapidated and dead. He just we, rotted away. Yeah. <laughs> um, we did a we did our third Harry Potter show, which was really more of a reading than a full show. But we brought back the dragon puppet one last time during that. We called him the Sleepy Dragon. He was asleep in Hagrid's hut. And uh, after that, we threw him right in the trash. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we, we had the basilisk that we made in that show. The basilisk yeah, then right afterwards, we threw him right in the garbage. Yeah. yeah. I like yeah. to think that somewhere, some Stargate fan has stumbled across all these. And is putting on like yeah. a, like a, yeah. like, a, like, a like a like a, a very production of it in the sewer. Yeah, yeah. With, like, it, it's awesome. The, the, the underworld. Yeah. Still, you, yeah. you threw away all the styrofoam bugs, right? Those are gone. Those... No, no, we gave those away. Yeah. Yeah, we, we gave all those bugs away. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. the, the big 2D bugs, we gave those away uh, during different events in Chicago. Um, like the wiener bug? Yes, yes, we gave we gave him away. Yeah, um, all those and the, bugs. And, and the, yeah. you know, all those bugs, we gave them right away. And then, uh, so we'll see what we end up doing with these uh, old Star Kid puppets. Um, you know, I've seen in the chat some people talking about the Gollum puppet. I think the Gollum puppet is long since deteriorated and dead. Um, he's gone. <laughs> uh, he, maybe he's in a box somewhere, but... Uh, no, like he, he died. He... He was falling apart throughout the show when we were doing it. And yeah. he, uh, like the last time I saw that puppet in like 2011, it was like barely hanging on. Like it was like a yeah. long stretched pantyhose. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so, that, so that yeah. one's dead. Um, but yeah, so we've had puppets in a lot of these shows. Uh, kind of our, the biggest one was uh, Starship. So we did puppets in. Uh, we had some puppets in The Hobbit. We had uh, the Gollum puppet in our Lord of the Rings show. In our Harry Potter, our first Harry Potter show, we had a dragon puppet. In the second Harry Potter show, we had a werewolf that I yeah. don't think I, I he's long gone. Um, we had a uh, we had those Dementors that I think were thrown away immediately yeah. after the show closed. <laughs> and then we had um, we had Sorty and Scarfy. The, the sorting and, hat and the and the scarf. Um, yeah. They, uh, I think we gave them to maybe Pat Brady, um, and I think they are so. they are somewhere. Um, then we uh, did our show Starship, which is where we flew too close to the sun with the puppets. Yeah, um, we we got we had way too many, way 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 too many. It was so hard that. After the show was done, we said, never again. No more puppets. Uh, because it was such a... It was it was just way too hard. Yeah. Um, there is, after Starship. Starship was an incredibly hard show to do. We were just very... Um, we were overworked. We didn't sleep for many, many nights. And we were trying to get all of these puppets because we had all of these gigantic bug uh puppets that we commissioned and then we made these huge kind of 2d bugs that were in the show the i that that show was the first show that we commissioned puppets so uh -huh. um there are a lot of people saying that you know they're looking at these puppets for that we're working on for this show and they're going like oh it'll be so great to see 
Starkid do puppets with a when they actually have a budget. But the thing that people don't realize is that those puppets, when we did Starship, cost twenty thousand dollars to have all of those puppets commissioned, and that was a deal. I think we commissioned something like ten puppets. We got them for two thousand dollars a puppet. Oh, wow. um, we helped design those puppets, but they were created by other people. It costs twenty thousand dollars to commission those puppets. The puppets for this show are actually going to be less expensive than the puppets for that show because we're creating them in house or ourselves. Did you, did you commission the Twisted and Firebringer puppets? As yes. Well? So those were commissioned by the same puppet builder, and uh, yeah. his name is Russ Walko. Uh, even even though we swore off puppets after Starship, we kept doing it. Uh, we kept we we couldn't kick our habit. We, uh, we, well, we said just a few, just, just a few. A few. There's like just two in each show. There are a few in each show, oh. and so in a uh, in twisted, we had a few. In Twisted, we had a monkey and a and a bird, um, and then when we did Firebringer, we had the duck, uh, and there were multiple ducks because there was a duck that would sit in the hat. There was a duck that flew on a stick, um, yeah. and we also had the saber tooth tiger and the woolly mammoth. Um, yeah, and those exist. Still. Originally, yeah. originally, oh, you go, you go. Oh, uh, we we uh, we had a puppet commission for the Starkid Lab Space Baby, and we we had to go try to find somebody who could fit in our budget. And we like asked around and kind of got laughed out of a few places. They were like, ten thousand is your minimum." We were like, "Yeah." Well, they were like, ten thousand minimum." We found somebody who was willing to do it for half that, but we had to wait nine months on a wait list just for him to get to it. So it's inflation. like inflation. Puppets are like they're amazing, but puppet I don't I don't know if people understand how well, niche and expensive uh, they are. They're not <laughs> inflation proof. And, yeah. and fun little known fact, puppet prices that, are tied directly to gas prices. Yes. <laughs> if gas because goes up, yeah. puppets go up. Puppets too. are filled with petroleum. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, if you if puppets are the most flammable thing on earth. Yes. Uh yes. So uh anyway, um this is why uh, this this time when we were doing this show, which the entire Castle series was conceptualized to kind of in some way be a creature series where creatures are going to be would be featured in each one of these stories. And the idea was to retell these fairy tales and tell them adult versions that had um, kind of these labyrinthy dark crystal looking type puppets. And we have for several years been experimenting with the puppet techniques on our own and um, and working on building them ourselves. So that's, uh, you know, and we were kind of emboldened when we did Nightmare Time 2, uh, when we made Lumberax and Otho, which were both puppets. And mm. I think they turned out really oh, well. They were so cool. They were hot. So, yeah. They were hot. <laughs> so we so we said oh well let's do it and that's when we started uh kind of working on 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 some of these guys so let's maybe take a look at some of these just so everybody knows we are about we're about a thousand dollars away from un unlocking the next song demo so you'll definitely want to hear this one uh this this is a song that um joey richter heard the music for this on the last stream if you heard and he said this song sounds like a bunch of toads in a bar. Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah, brother. Oh, this is the <laughs> <laughs> I'm a toad in a bar. I am. Wow. Here's some here's some interesting things of me and Nick tried to get puppets in the hatchet field. Wiggly, the Wiggly's true form was supposed to be a giant puppet. And then when we got to it, we went, mm -mm, nope, nope, we can't do it, no way. And we said, he'll just be these, he'll just be these light bulbs instead. <laughs> and, then, and then when we did Nerdy Prudes, we said, we said, this is it. We're gonna show the Lords of Black true form. They're gonna be flown in, and they're gonna be giant, realistic puppets. And we're like, yeah, this is where we're gonna spend all the budget. But then we got to it, and we said, how much money do we have to make Lords of Black? And we we're like. None, and uh, 
<laughs> and <laughs> none of us know how to make these puppets. And we were also like, wait a second, how are we going to do these puppets with, we only have access to five actors. How are they going to puppeteer giant big Lords of Black <laughs> puppets? And the more we talked about it, we were really stressing out about it. And uh, eventually we just got to the point where we said, they're just going to be people in costumes, aren't they? And we said, it was so camp, it was so good. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, I, it was I, perfect. I, 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 oh, yeah, it looked really cool. It looked so, very foreboding. You know, it looked like there yeah. was something, there was something creepy just beyond your reach, which was maybe even more scary. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah so, sometimes it, sometimes these, uh, these budget limitations help you and, and you get creative and all of that. That is something that for this show, uh, is not the case. We, we need to have these, um, <laughs> these creatures <laughs> on stage. Yeah. So you that's make it difficult if you want. That but. is not going to be the case this time. Um, so let's take a look at some of this puppetry kind of stuff. Let's, um, so a big thing, uh, that is going to be, that was figuring out how to get the puppets out of blink, how to, how to get them to mm -hmm. have their eyes move. So this is a very, uh, rudimentary eye mechanism, <laughs> uh, that we've worked out. So this is a, uh, you know, a pair of glass eyes, um, and with a very, very simple rudimentary sort of mechanism on here so that you can pull this little uh, lever and That's the eyes so will blink. <laughs> and even just the eyes blinking uh, brings oh, some light. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that. you can, so there's that. And uh, you love them immediately. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> when you know uh bigger bigger like uh, animatronics and things like that this would be motorized so they could be controlled by a radio or something like that and they would have more this is just made out of basically just uh uh popsicle sticks and um clay and things like that so if we hit 800 000 we'll get radios for all the eyes <laughs> yeah. so, you like little paper and popsicle sticks <laughs> And we were doing um, kind of, a, again, different experiments with these sorts of things. This was the idea of trying to have a double blink. So mm -hmm. trying to do a top lid and a bottom lid. And this was something that became so difficult that I gave up on it. Um, but eventually it was, you know, the idea was, you know, Whoa. that mm. they could, both of them can move. Um, and these would be manipulatable. If you see Nightmare Time, Otho, who is in the final episode of Nightmare Time 2, uh, Yellow Jacket, Otho has a double, double eyelids so that he can have the bottom lids go up and the top lids go down. And that was very, um, on, in Nightmare Time, it was easy to manipulate these puppets because they only were, saw, you could only, you looked at them from one angle. They only needed to exist in this little box. So Oth the back of Otho's head was completely open so that I could control all the mechanisms from just right behind you could like put a You could like put a curtain up and remove yourself to like be right there. Yeah. And the way that it was lit, I'm literally just standing behind him in a black sweatshirt. But you just it's, can't see it. Really. With the double lids, can you just do the bottom like so he can like... Like, yeah, like you, 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 you know, know, the bottom, so that you, yeah, you know, you know, ah! that, that changed my life. I remember so. during during that episode, people were insistent that that you would CG yeah. the eyeballs. Yeah. They were like, "That's CG," and I'm like, "No, nope. nope. like, that is just some glass are eyeballs." Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, no, we did not CGI okay. uh, the eyeballs. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, uh, yes, so so we had that. So we've been working on eye mechanisms. This was a puppet that we were developing for, uh, you know, the Castle series. This is a kind of a test puppet. So this is kind of another old man character who has, you know, one eye. So you can see even just having an eye that blinks and that just that will bring a nice sense of life to this character. Um, <laughs> and we were experimenting with, you know, a more kind of realistic, detailed sculpting on these things. And this was a, this was a, uh, one of our puppets that we had going on. What materials on. did you use for that? 
So this puppet is made out of several different materials. One thing is um, furniture foam. If you look in here, you will see that there's this kind of green furniture foam. And then uh, he has on top of that, uh, th there's um, a kind of uh, foam that you buy for cosplay. It's, uh, it's kind of a sturdy but malleable foam. So that's molded into different circles and things that uh, like spheres that we will then mold on top of. And then this character's skin is just made of a uh, of a sculptable foam. So he so he has it's directly sculpting the foam into the shape of the ears and things. And then it dries into a very lightweight foam because the other thing is you want these puppets to be very light because like uh like we've been saying you have to hold these things up for for a long time and if you've ever held up even just your arm for five minutes it becomes very painful so if you also have to support the weight of a 10 pound puppet it it becomes it is a feat of strength um, yeah. So if you've ever seen the Muppets or anything like mm -hmm. that, they tried to make those puppets as lightweight as humanly possible. And even then, like those people, all the Muppeteers are, they have insanely strong arm muscles because they have those puppets up for hours at a time. Yes, And Matt? are you using heat? Like, are you yeah. like, as you're sculpting it, are you using like heat to keep it? Sometimes, uh, you, sometimes with some of this foam, you do use heat. Uh, the the foam that you use for this cosplaying, you you hit it with a heat gun, it becomes then malleable so that you can sort of sculpt it. But mainly, um, it is cutting it into pieces and patterns. And I have patterns for like different sized spheres and things like that. So, gotcha. so the, foam, was... the foam can become clay like. Yes, they have sculptable foam. You it it comes in kind of like this these little uh, buckets. Uh, and it's kind of like a paste that then you sculpt it and then it'll dry into a hard foam. Wow. Nick, like, is, it, hard foam. is it like, is there, what's the shell that it goes on? Is it like, will you on the frog put foam on top of that? Or is it like, what is, what forms yes. the skull, if you will? So, so this one, you'll Dude. be able to see it right here. So this sort of foam, this is a very, uh, this is like a sheet of lightweight moldable foam. And then he has an understructure in his head that is made up of pieces of that foam that are cut and uh, made into like simple shapes, like circles and things like that, that then you sculpt on top of. So that is basically what these things are made out of. And then you just, um, you know, you, you get it to look as good as you possibly can. This is a character that is uh, kind of um, in the middle of different things. So this character has uh, the beginnings of some sculpting of epoxy sculpt on his on his lips and things like that. So these are all characters that we have made for various different things because we have been working on this castle series for some time. So these puppets are... Some of them are test puppets. Some of them are puppets that, you know, we've we've done for various different stories for the Castle series. That's um, if we hit if we hit three twenty, <laughs> we're gonna get this guy some chapstick. Oh yeah, he mm -hmm. oh, nice. does. <laughs> His name's Charlotte He's got a little smile on him. He's, uh, is that a yeah. moisturizer? We're gonna get this guy yeah. some CeraVe. Somebody <laughs> said Ed Sheeran. Ceramides. <laughs> so you'll see that this character has the epoxy sculpt on some of areas of his face, but then other areas. And the epoxy sculpt is basically a, uh, again, it's a clay sort of material that then dries into a very hard plastic. Um, so we have that so that we can get these sort of fine details, like these really gross looking chap lips. This oh. character was inspired by a character named Gwildor from uh, the He-Man movie, the Masters of the Universe movie, if you've ever seen. So that was kind of the idea behind his mouth here. And so you'll see that I didn't even finish doing the epoxy sculpt on him, but you will see what this uh, sculptable foam uh, looks like underneath him. 
So he's, he's a blinking like a, character. A what is the tool that you're using to sculpt? <laughs> so they these are just tools that you can get at um, Michael's or Joanne Fabrics. They're just like little plastic uh, things that have like little points stuff. on them and and little plastic blades so you can cut things up and poke things and all of that. It's just about, you know, sculpting you get, it. You can get all these tools at your, lo at your local puppet target. <laughs> um, so, so, uh, but seriously though, you can get all of these things at Joanne Fabrics. There is no, um, I have no access to any kind of special store beyond that. So all of this stuff this is, is just stopping made you all from going and making puppets. Yeah. And Matt, so, this is uh, a little puppet you've got. Can we yeah. Your little, can we, can we look at that? Yeah. Oh, wow, this little boy. Wow. This little boy. boy. Yeah, so so the epoxy is it on the on the snout? Yeah. yeah. How did you make the real? How did you make his eyeballs? Are they little blueberries? <laughs> so that, so that, <laughs> thank you, Nemo. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, yeah. We say that his face is three chocolate chips. Oh. <laughs> three little chocolate chips. Oh. Hey, oh. Nemo, look. Nemo, look. Look. He doesn't. He doesn't see screens. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, Y'all, we're getting closer yeah. to the Star Kid dog show. So yeah. just yeah. 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 You guys, we're $300 we away. $300. Yes. $300. We're, we're about $300 away from wow. unlocking the next it. song demo. Million. This is all dogs. <laughs> Good. So, um, yeah, the dogs. We all get fired. Yeah, yeah we so so all dogs. dogs. It's just dogs. Dog show. Adaptation of all dogs go to <gasps> Yes, yes, donate for the dogs. <laughs> Um, so, I kind of like the idea of hosting like a dog competition for everybody, you know, well, the panel of judges. What about the, the people with cats? Okay, that? bring in cats. <laughs> <laughs> no, they will lose. Yeah. They will lose. I don't think it needs to be a competition. I think it just needs to be something where we just award all the dogs. They all have yes. different awards. Yeah. I don't think it's a competition. Award. It's just everyone gets different awards. Yeah. I love that. Because they're all so special. All when winners. I was a kid, we would host dog shows yeah. for my whole block. And everybody on the block would bring their dog, that and we would like do a little dog ever. show, and we would wear little costumes. It was so cute. I was meant to be an actor from the get-go. I was that all about the costume. Start the animal uh, show. That's great. Yeah, little pet, uh, little best in show. Uh, oh, I love how far are we? Um, so we're oh. we're still about uh, three what, three hundred away. We're about three hundred away. We're a little over three hundred dollars. But we just hit 5,000 backers. Yeah. Yeah. 5, backers. Yeah. All right. Thank you all so much. Thank Ooh, you for contributing cool. to the campaign. Um, you know, again, we're we're in, we're floored by the response that this show has received thus far. Um, but like we keep saying, these shows are very expensive, um, and so the more money we raise, the better the production can be. the The initial uh, Kickstarter goal this time around was our uh, base budget that we needed to just make something possible. And with each one of these kind of... Oh, Nemo. It's his time to eat, so he's being oh. annoying. <laughs> I get it. So. I love that. I'm hungry. Feed him on the stream! Feed, feed him, him on the stream! stream. Feed, feed him on the right. stream! Let me go feed him. So All right, great. We're getting close. Out. Oh, yeah. What, oh, yeah. What what's the you next song about? This is, uh, oh, what's the next song about? Um, so the next song is a song um, that is sung by Ella Ashmore. Um, so Ella in this show is um, she's the last survivor of the of the House Ashmore, a noble house in the lands that are that has been overrun by. We did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. All right. Awesome. Thank you all so much. So 318, we've made it. So uh, this is a this is a song that Ella is singing um, as she is in the kitchen. Uh, we lost it. We lost it. We lost it. Somebody once they heard what it was about, they pulled their money. Oh, okay. No, we, we still got it. We still got it. Oh no, we're back. Oh yeah, we're back. We're back up. We're back up. We're back up. We're back up. We got. We're back. Um. So uh. So this is a song that Ella is singing. Uh, while she is in the kitchen of her home being forced to make uh, dinner for her troll stepmother and stepsisters. But because they are trolls, they eat 
things like um, uh, bugs and um, and dead <laughs> cats and things like that. So they uh, so this is a song where Ella is singing about her frustration with these trolls, how much she wants to uh, get get out from under these trolls and uh, and see them uh, see them dead. Uh, so this is a song called Step on Your Grave, sung by Ella oh. Ashmore. Step on your grave. I was raised to be a praise, my path was made, my dress was made, a princess bride to be. Step on your grave Stepmother's got the same grave go so that was uh step on step on your grave uh sung by ella jeff what was your inspiration for this song uh i was into a lot of i was listening to a lot of blues guitar and i was like this is i think this is well we had one idea initially for ella's i want song that was a little more saccharine and heartfelt but we're like nah she just wants to kill she just wants to kill her whole family <laughs> and uh so we went that direction i was like i think she's in a blues sort of mood so it's really yeah 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 the guitar yeah. Is so good yeah that bing me bing me bing me bing me bing me bing that's the that's what joey described as sounding like a bunch of toads in a bar well, that's when she's in the kitchen. There are a bunch of frogs going, "More me!" <laughs> <laughs> well, she's the, you, you know. Funnily enough, there is a frog in this scene um, that uh, you'll have to see the you show to a hundred percent learn what happens. But um, so this is that was uh, a song, uh, "Step on Your Grave," uh, sung by Ella Ashmore, um, and I think it's really fun. I think it's really funky. I think that Jeff is you're dipping into all of these different styles of music for the show. And um, I think that this one, you're kind of, you know, you dipped into things like blues and, and country and all of these things that kind of have this sound to it, like that. There is a bit of a kind of a, uh, you know, it, it feels of another time, which yeah. I think 
works really well for the fantasy setting of this of the show and i think that it really captures that swampy uh yeah. the, yeah. the swamp because the house ashmore <clears throat> is next to a swamp um yeah. which uh which She's you can frog guts and cooking yeah. frog guts and all that good stuff um so do we, uh, some mouse butts. Yep. do we want to set a goal for the next song demo <laughs> i think so i think yeah. Sorry, i think that's no, a good no, idea no, do no, we no. want to do 320 uh that sounds good three 320 yeah yeah so we will play our next song demo at when the when the campaign total reaches 320 um and you are definitely going to want to hear this one this is a song for the trolls <laughs> so yeah. we got a we got a villain song we got the troll song so you're gonna want to hear you're gonna want to hear that Holy shit. and we will and we will do that one as soon oh as uh, we get three hundred and twenty thousand dollars. And I want to answer a question that uh, Moonbeans asked: Is Sh is Shrek canon? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, okay. no, no, no. There, no, no, no other stories but, are canon in this in this world. Love that. No, no Shrek or anything like that. That's good. Oh, I didn't know what you meant by that at all. I was just asking. Shrek what lives in this world. world. I, that's what that person yeah, asked. That's, I just, that's all they said. Yeah. Okay. Also, hey, so so while I'm thinking, I'm picturing the animated version of this show for some reason. And I'm like, during that song, all of like the animals she has on her kitchen table are gonna are singing along with her, like during the little frogs. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. you know, like and like, one of like the frogs things. in the boiling water pop out. And they start singing. And one of their water. like burps is like a big bubble that yeah. makes one of the noises. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are, they, are they doing that like a uh, Gaston choreography where they're like passing the mugs between sure. each other? <laughs> and they're farting. And they're farting. And they're farting. They and they're farting. Are they're farting. <laughs> They got all sorts of little sounds coming out of these animals. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, so so we'll see. Um, so we'll see what we can pull off on stage. It really depends on how much money we end up raising. Um, it's uh, I would love it if little creatures yeah. were all over this troll kitchen and and Ella was interacting with you know a a bat in a cage and like a little frog over here and a possum uh, uh, all of that that'd be awesome but uh, yeah or it'll really depend on money on our budgetary yeah. constraints if we raise 300 million dollars we can actually animate it hell yeah yeah and that's yeah, yeah, there you go. Million. that's, so that's good if that's a good everyone goal. on this stream just gave us like a million dollars. Just a million dollars. They're up there pledged by a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. We can do great things. Vegas, Vegas Theater. I think we only need one billionaire as like. Well, yeah. we just need Taylor fucking Swift to give us a little bit of her money. And really, I, she's, she doesn't one get of, political. One of you has. She doesn't to, get political. She doesn't talk about politics. One of you has to know Barack Obama. They got a production company. Just call him up and yeah. we got problems. Cut, yeah, that's easy. Yep. Yeah. Call, call him up. Um. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so we will be unlocking the next song that is the uh, that is a troll villain song as soon as we reach three hundred and twenty thousand dollars. And speaking of uh, raising this money, uh, maybe now is a good time, Matt, for us to kind of talk through our the rewards that you can get if you go and you do um, give to the campaign. All of the great things that we're offering in. Uh, as a thank you for contributing to the show and help making it possible uh so yeah. we've got we've got some fun rewards fireworks. uh please please fireworks please. fireworks <laughs> uh you know what i'm going to uh i'm gonna Mute share my, <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna share my screen as we do this <laughs> all right here we go so um let's take a look at some of our, the rewards we'll be offering uh so these are what you will get um if you choose to back this show and uh so if you haven't done so already We've got a lot of good things. If you have done so, 
Uh, thank you so much for contributing. Uh, so our first reward tier is our $5 reward tier. This is uh, simple and classic. Your name in the credits. Um, so you can become a part of the of the show. You can have your name in the credits of the show. We we and this is our our base tier. So if you give five dollars or more, you can get your name in the credits, and this tier will be included in then every single reward tier that will go through after this. So even if you got five dollars to give, um, you know every little bit helps. We really appreciate it, and your name will be on the YouTube video, and memorialized for all of time as being a part of the team that helped bring this show together and bring it to yeah. life. Our uh, our second tier is our fifteen dollar uh, reward tier, which um, is I love them. there. They are there. Are the yeah. trolls right there, the troll trio. Um, this is going to be uh, access to our behind the scenes featurette. So during the production, we are going to be uh, documenting the entire process and we're going to be uh, creating a really fun behind the scenes look. And you can see how one of these shows is made. We'll include footage that we've already shot from making our Kickstarter video, from making, uh, we'll include everything, documenting the entire process so that you can see how one of these shows is made and you can be even more a part of the creation of Cinderella's Castle. And that's just for $15. And you get that and you also get your name in the credits. Then our next tier, this is, uh, this is I think, really cool. This is the Composer Demo Album. So all the tracks that we are listening to yeah. today that we are unlocking plus more are going to be included on this composer demo album so this is uh everything that jeff has has created in preparation of the show this is all of his uh all of his demos and so you can hear this you can hear what these songs are like before the cast comes in and uh and they take over and create the version that will be in the youtube video and on stage so I think this is great. So if you've liked the songs that you've heard thus far, you want them, you want to keep them forever. Give uh, all it takes is twenty five dollars. These are really cheap songs. You're getting all the songs for twenty five dollars. <laughs> and so, and Nick, songs. Yeah. just to clarify for people who may not have uh, backed Kickstarter before, if they uh, do it, if they choose a tier, they get all the other tiers underneath. Yes. Them, correct? Yes. Yep. So if you so if you back and you get this this composer demo album, you're not only getting the demo album, you're also getting the behind the scenes featurette, and you are also getting your name in the credits. So uh, I think that's pretty cool. Just twenty five dollars, all of that for only twenty five dollars. Uh, at our fifty dollar tier, this is something that's going to be very useful for you if you are planning to come and see the show. This is early access to tickets. So there are a limited number of tickets that are going to be available at the, at the live show. Um, you know, we have a, we're doing the show at the El Portal Theater in uh, North Hollywood in Los Angeles, California. It is a 360 seat theater and we are doing eight performances. So if you do the math, it's uh, something like 2000 something tickets are available. That is a finite number. There will only be that many available to you. So if you want to have early access at getting those tickets, uh, getting basically first dibs to go in and get them, uh, you can uh, uh, do this tier. You will have, there will be a- Oh, we, we no, hit 320 just for a second. Hit 320. We hit 320 for a yeah, second? We, yeah, we, yeah, we've hit it, 320. Yeah. Hit it? Yeah, hooray! Right. All right, great. So let's put a let's put a uh, let's put a hold on on going through these. We'll come back to this, and uh, yep. for now. Oh. Oh. Okay. So. Um, <laughs> Whenever you're ready, Nick. All right. So we've now hit three twenty. Thank you so much. So this next song that we are going to be listening to, uh, the next demo is a song called Facade. This is a song sung by the trolls, the, the stepmother and the stepsisters, as they are preparing to go to the ball. 
and they are uh, wearing their skin suits. And this song is not complete uh, yet, so it's a small sampling of the song. We also don't want to spoil too much. So, but here we go. Let's give a listen to this fun villain song. Uh, take it away. The ball awaits. I skin my suits. I play my fish. Oh, yeah. I don't forget my roots. I'm just pulling out of the shit. I love that one. I love there's a there's this there's like this lick underneath in the in the music that's going oh, yeah. 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 It's very nine inch nails. Yeah, yeah. Very, yes. like, uh, it's yes. so much fun. Uh Jeff, we might have to adjust some of the lyrics because I'm not sure that Troy exists. I was gonna ask yeah. you about that. I, yeah, I was gonna ask you about that. Oh. No, no worries, no yeah. worries. This is the yeah, demo, so uh Let's this is not even 100% what you'll see in the show, but uh, it's such a fun song, and I and I I love it. I love the whole feel of it. I love the instruments that you've chosen. The 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 sound. It sounds so grungy, and again, it sounds it is giving me all of those fun labyrinthy sounds, like that yeah, synthesizer. Yeah. It sounds dirty and cool and funky, and I I'm really excited to see. These three trolls kind of uh, tear tear it up. Can, and, I, can yeah. I say what I said? I said some poetry back here. I said, "Yesterday's prude girl is tomorrow's gross girl." Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thanks, Nick. Um, <laughs> thank you, Mariah. Thank you. Um, yeah, so it's going to be super fun. It's going to be Mariah, Angela, and Lauren Lopez as these three trolls. We want you, because um, the trolls, you know, we've said this before, they wear these skin suits so that they can take the guise of, of humans. Trolls in this world are, are hated creatures that are hunted because they are very dangerous. They eat people, all this kind of stuff. Uh, so they have to take, they have to put on this facade of these skin, uh, of these skin suits of these women that they skin. And so we, uh, I'm really excited for when you're in your human forms. I really want it to be like the Sanderson sisters. Yeah, I want yeah. to see these three funny, just over the top female villains, oh. uh, traipsing all over the stage and just really hamming it up. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's gonna get there real quick, and then we're gonna go even farther somehow, and we'll do the play. Screech asked, "Will the skin suits just be the actors not using the puppets? No, we're we're gonna skin some real yeah. people and yeah. put them in other suits. Yeah. Put, yeah. put them yeah. inside. The, yeah. We already signed the, the, the contract. Yeah, the, 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 the puppets face. are 
inside the skin suit. Um, no, I think is there uh, a tier that people can pay for to be yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, was, there, there was there was somebody the earlier spamming the chat oh saying God. skin me, Angela. Skin me. So, oh, oh, wow. they want to buy it. Wow. They want to buy it. <laughs> oh, um, What's our next goal? Hey, Thomas Anderson. Let's oh. let's take a look. It is. It what, would be twenty. Right it would be twenty-two, right? Yeah, what are we doing it? Twenty-two. Has. Let's do 322. And 325 is our silver budget, so we're almost there. We're almost there. And uh, like we've said uh, several times, uh, these shows uh, get pretty expensive. And we'll kind of on the stream, I think we'll even talk a little bit about uh, breaking down where all the money went for Nerdy Prudes Must Die. To give you, to give you an idea of how much one of these shows costs. And uh, we'll, we'll kind of talk about what everything cost that time around. And that time around, the characters were wearing things like blue jeans. And the sets were uh, a, a little set of bleachers and some school chairs. Uh, so this time around, we are going to be trying to, you know, create a fantastical world. So the more money we raise, the, the, the better the production can be. The more we'll be able to do um, with our with our well, set and with well, our costumes well. and things like that. What's this spot right here? In the <laughs> Hello. Um, so we're going to unlock the next song demo at $322,000. And the next song, you know... I really love all the songs in this show, but this next one might actually be my favorite uh, song in the show. Uh, this is a song that is going to be sung by Ella and then some other characters that we haven't even discussed uh, uh, at all during the campaign uh, because we don't want to um, spoil We don't want to give everything away. This is my favorite get... song, too. I love yeah, this so, song. So this is kind of the happiest song in the show and uh so i i don't want to spoil too much but this is a this is a fun um ella is excited about something in this show in this song and it is a and it's a really fun song and i'm really excited for it <laughs> it's one of my favorite it it might be my favorite one in the show it's it's really fun um so we'll unlock that at uh three hundred and twenty two thousand we're really um, close to 321000 so uh, it's really only about $1,200 away from unlocking that song demo. Um, in the meantime, do we want to uh, take a look at some more of our reward tiers? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's kind of pick up where we left off. Um, I'm going to share my screen. If I freeze when I do this, I apologize. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I think I think we were on um, access to the pre-sale for the tickets, and yet yeah, there is there are not that many tickets available. And when you look at how many people have already gotten the VIP tickets, uh, and those VIP tickets each come with two tickets, so the amount of tickets that we have to sell is kind of shrinking. So this will be if you're planning on seeing the show. Getting Crucial. early access to the tickets will be really, really useful. Joey, are you leaving? I have to go. I'm so sorry. I have to go, but I, I love you all. It's Bye, been fun. Joey. It's been fun. Bye, Joey. Have fun party. Bible study. I got to go to church. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to church, but I, I, I love you all. <laughs> We love you, Joey. We can't oh, wait Joey. to uh, keep going. I don't know why this person is please, please so please, much, but please, we love you. Please. Don't worry, I have to go. Please, please. 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 Oh, my God. Jesus, Murphy. Goodbye, Joey. Thank you so much. Bye. Um, uh, all right. So, this, so uh, we're talking about our, our early access to tickets tier. Um, again, this is going to be useful if you want to come see the live show. You can have uh, first access to buying those tickets. There will be a an exclusive period of time where people only with this access will have access to going and buying those tickets. In addition to that early access, you also get your name in the credits. You get the behind the scenes featurette. You get the composer demo album. You get the access to the ticket uh, pre-sale, the early access to tickets. Um, and all right. that.
just for fifty dollars. Right. So well, <laughs> pretty good. No, no, the stream is not over in fifteen minutes. We no. still have an hour and fifteen. We have an hour at least. Yes, an we hour have hour. an hour and fifteen minutes. This is a three hour stream, not a two hour stream. So yes. So we're we're gonna see how far we can we can push that Kickstarter total during the stream. I think we can achieve our silver budget, our silver yes. budget tier. And I think we can go even beyond that. Let's see what's possible. Yeah. The next song that we're going to unlock is going to be unlocked at, what What did we say? 22, 322. 22. So we're oh, yeah, $1,000 away. Less than, yeah. Less, less than $1,000 than than away. So do that and we'll play oh, another I'm really excited. Oh, song I'm really demo. excited. Um, okay, so looking at our next tier, our next reward tier, so this is actually where our physical rewards begin. Um, and the first one here is, I think, uh, very cool. I'm very excited about it. Um, this is an, an art print of a map of the lands that are, the world in which uh, Cinderella's Castle takes place. This is a beautiful piece of art that we have had commissioned. Um, John, Matt, do you want to talk about um, the artist a little bit? Ooh. Yeah. Water. Yes, the the map was illustrated by Sarah Keeley, or or you may know her as Magical Narwhal, on all of her social media stuff. Um, we first became aware of her when she did these um, posters for the Hatchet Field shows, right, Nick? How did you get yours? Because you hung yours up, right? Well, um, she. She's done these amazing pieces of art that are, um, yes, for the Hatcherfield shows that are kind of like these fun, really graphic, uh, kind of like posters for the shows. And mine, uh, Dylan gave it to, to everybody. Dylan printed out all of these little nightmare time images that, that were made, and he gave it to everyone kind of in celebration of nightmare time. So um, I've got it hanging in my room. It's awesome. And uh, so she has created this beautiful map um, that will give you a look at not only the portion of the lands that are that Cinderella's castle takes place in, but also you'll see little hints at possible future stories within the castle series. Um, so uh, it's, a, it's a nice big world. There are little Easter eggs all throughout it, things that won't even make sense to you for for years but um in five years you'll be able to look at this map and say oh that's where that takes place um, nice. <laughs> if we end up doing future things so, are we able to talk a little bit about what part of the map um cinderella's castle takes place in absolutely um let me even try to pull up this pull up this map so that we can yeah there's so many map. wonderful details that Magical Narwhal added to the map. It's really, really beautiful. Yeah. And the full print of it is such an awesome work of yeah, art. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And um, I've, I've heard some people asking how big is it going to be? It's going to be a big map. It's going to be what? 24 what? by 36. So what? it's, it's going to be pretty big because I wanted this map. I yeah, wanted to. Too. I wanted to frame it and hang it up on my wall. That was the. Um, that was the philosophy behind all these rewards. We said they have to be something that I would want. Yes. Yeah. So we. Uh, so everything is as high quality as we can make it. We got. We commission artists to do to do everything. So everything has a very artistic, handcrafted feel and. Um, you know, we're we're trying to make uh, quality was the name of the game with these rewards. So, um, so we okay. hope you like them. I'm going to show you a little bit of this map here. Awesome. Um, all right, can everybody? Uh, here we go. The map. Uh, the map of the lands that are. Very pretty. So, you can, it's beautiful. I love the colors in it. I love the graphic style. I think there are so many fun little details all over the place here. So um, let's see if I can zoom in here. I just want to live in one of those little huts in front of the castle. I know. Castle. They're so cute. Right near the water. Oh, look at yeah. this. Okay, so 
Um, can everybody see this? What's going on here? Yes, we can see. Yeah. It. All right. So if you look on this on this map here, you will see. Uh, right. First off, first and foremost, right here, the house Ashmore. Uh, this is uh, where Ella lives. Where she. This is her noble house that has been overrun by by trolls. Uh, taken over. Um, you can see it's kind of dilapidated in a poor state. The house Ashmore in a in a forest called the Wilder Wood. Uh, next to it is the old oak that is going to play into the the story. Uh, this old oak is significant in a way. This is a place where Ella's uh, mother uh, used to go, and so it is. Um, it is a special place for Ella, and it factors into the story in a uh, very significant way. Uh, and then beneath it, you will see the swamp where um, where things like Sir Hoplot is from, and yeah. even some yeah. of these trolls have, have kind of come. We also... Uh, My home. Have, your home. We do also reference the Bridge of Fell Doom. Uh, in in the show as well. So th this sort of uh, area, and then here is the old king's castle. Uh, when we are talking about Cinderella's castle, this is the castle that we are talking about. Um, but on the map, it's called the old king's castle. You will see um, through the events of the story um, what happens with it. Why is it called the old king's castle? What is it, but this is basically the the map, the area of the map that we are concerned with here. Um, and Nick, Nick, you and Matt live in one of those little houses, don't you? Yeah. Uh huh. We live. Okay. We live right nice. in that in that one, right over by the one by the S in the old King's Castle. That What's little house. Is that a low interest rate? Oh, that's <laughs> where we, uh, that's where we live. Those are nice. Yeah. Such um, a beautiful but, map. I can't wait to frame this. But you will see that yeah. the map is much is much bigger than just uh, that portion of the of the world that we're that we're in that we're talking about. Um, you will see uh, this. Does, so this whole does map anybody is... want to see a different region? Do we want to zoom see in the on dragon. anything? Else? The dragon. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. For me. All right. So here is uh, an area of the of the map. Um, sorry, it's floating for some oh, no, reason. Over about? here we have the castle that won. Oh yeah, we we reached our next goal. So oh, wonderful. Wanna pause this for a bit and we'll come back to the map though. We'll come back yeah. to the map and we'll continue to castle that was the Dragon. castle that was was what was what. <laughs> um, sorry, everybody. I think okay. I'm frozen. We'll apologize. You're fantastic. That's right. We can hear you just fine. Should we set up the next? Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I'm just. Has this um, has this thing been re removed? Yeah. Yes, the it map, has. The map is gone. The map is gone now. Yeah. Oh, great. You I think I'm just frozen. Uh, my long neck. Okay. So this next song that you're going to hear uh, is a song called Last Forever. This is a, a song sung by Ella Ashmore uh, when she's very excited about uh, about something, and she is joined by two characters that are significant in the show that we have not talked about um, anywhere in the campaign, and I think we'll kind of keep it that way because we don't want to spoil the show too much. Uh, but you can listen to the song. Can everybody still hear me? Yes, yes. you're coming in just fine. Okay, great, awesome. So. Can you see me or am I frozen? You're frozen, You're frozen but, frozen, but, better. but we're ready to throw it to the song whenever you are. Okay, great. Why don't <laughs> Here we go. When I was four, I'd lay in bed and paint a picture in my mind. Day, I take a pen and make it mine And through the years The canvas might have weathered away But the paint, it still hasn't dried I've been thinking about, thinking about, thinking about This day as long as I remember And I've been dreaming about, dreaming about, dreaming about How I can make it last
incredible. Wait, is Nick Nick will be coming back soon. Um, and now uh, Matt and I are going to be taking over hosting the stream. Uh, isn't okay. that right, Nick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. Matt was great. Now just me. Matt, you're back. Oh, is Nick? Is is Nick what? Yes, he's gone. Oh, he's gone. Yes. Okay. Oh no. But I'm sure he'll be back soon. And thank you so much for okay. us unlock that stream. Here he is. He's back. I'm gonna add him. He'll probably add himself. Um, okay. Hey, Nick, hey. you're back. Opening the map. Okay. Oh, the map is so big. It's, it's too much. There's too much magic on that map. If, if you're careful when you frame it and put up on your wall, things are just going to fly off. Um, so, yes, the the map is a huge file. Um, and because there's so much so, detail, there's so much detail and magic encased within. Um, <laughs> Yes, the, the yeah. If you know anything about Photoshop or large files or everything, this is a TIFF file, and it's um yeah, twenty. It's actually twenty four mm -hmm. by thirty six, three hundred dots per inch. So it's a massive, giant thing. So that it prints out super crisp, super Beautiful. clear. But what it, is it like um, a couple of gigs? How big is it? It's pretty big. It's um it's pretty I big, think. huge. I should have turned it into JPEG before I. Before I opened it. No, that's okay. I'm always saying that. Um, yeah, I'm always saying that. Could have turned it into a JPEG. I am. I'm Jiminy Cricket to Kurt right now. So, Nick, that was your. That's one of your favorite songs in the show, right? How'd you feel listening I to it? I, I, well, I couldn't hear it at all because I was oh. out of the out of the oh, no. studio. But I've heard it before many times, and I love it. I think it's great. I think that it's. Uh, I think it gets you pumped. I think it's very wholesome and cute and the harmonies and are great. Harmonies are great. I can't wait to see all and these. And if we already there. choreographed it, it's this. It's that. It's there that dance. Oh, Talk oh, to. I already choreographed it, and it's that. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Mariah we choreographed that for a second yeah. there. But... Um, <laughs> I I love the part of the song where it, the dance break where it breaks yep, down the to the. <laughs> Yeah, and you and everybody's mm -hmm. gonna do this on stage. I, I can't yeah. wait. And then just switch it up and go like this. And then they go. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, and a lot of that is gonna be up to uh, Lauren Lopez, who is going to choreograph we'll the show. Lauren Lopez. Lauren Lopez, who was the choreographer on uh, Nerdy Broods Must Die, is going to return to be doing um, to be doing the choreography for this for this show as well. Um, so we're really excited to have her back in this capacity, um, and we're really excited to see what she comes up with. Um, when are we going to play our next demo? That's a great question. Uh, we've been, we've been going at the pace of about two thousand uh, dollars. We play one, so we could do it at three twenty-four. We could play the next demo, um, okay. but our and our silver goal will be three twenty-five. So we're we're very close to our silver budget. Okay, um, great. So on the way to the silver budget, we'll play another song demo, and then we'll hit our silver budget. We'll celebrate. Hopefully, we'll see. Everyone could decide to stop giving money right before we get to that silver budget. We'll see what happens. But oh. um, we'll it will on the way to silver budget. We'll play one more song demo, uh, and this song demo is uh, you're definitely going to want to hear this one because this is the song that the Prince and Ella sing at the fall. This is the yeah. Prince Ooh. and Ella at, at the fall. This is the Prince's. Excellent. Oh, yeah. 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 This is, this is going to be, this is going to be a good one. Uh, Jeff, you want to talk a little bit about, about when you were writing this song and you said, should I make it? silly or should i make it just cool and you went oh, yeah that's just yeah cool. yeah that's yeah. cool yeah this yeah. one i was just at my keyboard and i then the, the hook the neon hook came out did we say the name of the song already no, um just, well it. you just no, said it you the, just said the oh, song oh. is called neon yeah so anyway oh, we, went, we went we went the cool direction and uh yeah i don't know how much again without spoilers but uh it's just the vibe 
we're sticking with that cool vibe this time around, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, this this is my second favorite song in the show. And yeah. it but it was the one that like I heard it and I said that perfectly encapsulates the tone that we were going for. Yeah. Like like with with Curse Crazy, I was like we had to move a few things around in the script to, to make it fit, but Neon was just perfect right from the start. You just put it in there and it was oh, great. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and um, part of me when I was when I was working on it, I was like, can we can we pull off just cool without a joke? And I go, we're gonna try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna try. Yeah. I think it fits the vibe of the whole show. That's exciting. That's yeah, really yeah. exciting. I was like, there's no joke here. It's just cool. And I go, all right, let's yeah. go for it. Yes. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited for it, and I and, and James, I can't wait to to see you Woo! just go to town on, on this one and and move and because the prince is like we've talked about the prince a little bit. He's kind of a he's kind of buffoonish. He's kind of a clownish character, but he is our version of Prince Charming. So he still kind of carries that kind of appeal. To where he he he's definitely outwardly uh, very beautiful and alluring. So yeah. I think that, um, and I think that that's a, a lot of the show is is about characters that kind of present one way. Uh, the big time with these trolls that wear people's skin uh, to hide their true trollish innards. Um, but uh, so I think it it's it's going to be great. I'm excited to see what Lauren does with the number too. I, I haven't talked to her yet. Oh, it's this. It's oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's this. right. That's right. But just with neon lights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. You got it. Which, by the way, can I say I'm really excited because the music is so colorful, like it just sounds just so vibrant and cool that I'm really excited to see what like becomes of everything once we have our production side figured out, and especially the lighting. Wait, which yes. we have a production meeting tomorrow. And yes. I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing what all of our designers are going to. Has there to has there been a mock up of the set yet or no? No, no, no. We're we're having our first production meeting tomorrow. But I have been in contact with Lex, who did the set for Nerdy Prudes, and Joey, who did the lighting for Nerdy Prudes, and they're coming back to do this show. And they're already writing me messages, going like, "I've got all these ideas because light is also you will see." very important in the story in this in the show so um so light is going to it, it, they're already trying to think of ideas of saying we want to incorporate lighting into the set and incorporate this and incorporate that and you'll you'll find out why so i'm very excited to see what they come up with i think that nerdy fruits must die the lighting was so gorgeous yeah, uh, yeah. in that show and um, so I'm really excited to see what everyone comes up with this time. Uh, yes. Somebody said, are the new characters also played by the uh, announced cast? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We've we've announced all the 10 members of the cast. We haven't found our understudies yet. So we will be looking for our understudies over the, over the coming months. But we have our 10 uh, key cast members and like many many star kid shows we have uh these cast members playing several different characters throughout the throughout the course of the show so while we have announced who all the 10 cast members are and we have announced um uh kind of the main characters that they're playing that isn't every character that they'll be playing. yeah we don't want to give everything away um yeah these two characters in particular we don't want to talk about but in the writing process, they were my two favorite to write. I had a yeah, lot yeah, of fun the, writing them. Yeah, the two characters that sang uh, that sang with Ella in Last Forever. Yes, they yeah. are also two of my very favorite characters. When we were writing them, we had so much fun, and we said, these two are great. <laughs> yeah, I was just, oh, they just wrote themselves. Yeah. Sometimes, of... sometimes characters are stubborn. And they're hard to figure out. And then sometimes you are blessed with a character that just writes themselves. The yep. prince just wrote himself. Didn't yeah. have to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The prince was, the prince was easy. And, and, and easy. Yeah. And, and Taddeus kind of came along with the prince where you just go like, 
all right, here's this guy being ridiculous. And what would you say in response to that? So those two are a funny pair. Um, Sir Hopalot and Crumb were pretty easy to write, honestly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, they, they were easy. Um, but, uh, you know, this this happens this happens every show. The, some of the characters are great. And these two characters that we haven't even talked about, that, and we won't talk about them because we don't want to spoil everything in the show, uh, they were super fun to write. Well, you're talking about the two characters that, uh, from the song. last song? Yes, from the last song, from uh, Last Forever. Um, oh, are there, who, which characters are the hardest to write, somebody said? Uh, usually it's... No. We, um, we actually got into a little bit of writer's block with the trolls. We yeah. had a difficult time. <laughs> we, had a difficult, we had a difficult time with the trolls. Because... And we were like, because they're we were like we were like oh this is going to be so easy we're going to have such an easy time with the trolls they're gross trolls and then we got to the first scene with them and we were like uh i feel like they should be better i feel like they should be funnier and grosser and everything and we were having a really difficult time and we kind of did a, a a draft where we were just like we just need to get through them we just need to get through them and then we got to the next scene with the trolls, and then suddenly the trolls got easy for some reason, and they were just boom easy. And then we went, okay, now we can go back and 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 fix the previous scene. You know, sometimes it just takes a while to get something started up. So, yeah, to, but to get your hooks those, into it, yeah, especially those were probably when, the most difficult because this story. Um, you know, we've talked about it before. Matt and I made up this this show in 2018 as we were working on black friday uh this was kind of the fun thing that we were working on going like oh wouldn't it be great if we were writing this and uh we made up these trolls and we were like oh these, these are the best ideas for characters and then when we got to writing them it, we just had a lot of pressure because they were built up in our mind of going like these ones are supposed to be the funny characters and I think we ended up cracking it and and getting them, but it, it took us a while to get into the trolls. That is usually how it works, is any character that you make up, and in the in theory, they're like, you go, oh, they're the best. When you get into writing, you have the most pressure and, and like you want them to be good. So they always, it's difficult for that character, character to meet your expectation for them. So yeah. that quite a bit we're close by the way sorry we're, we're some, less than a thousand away we're just wanted to, oh we're nice close. We, we, we got past 323 nice less than a thousand away to unlocking um the prince and ella's song at uh at the ball which is um, obviously a big moment in the story of cinderella so we wanted to have a really cool song and jeff did such an amazing job writing this song so yeah. Uh, question from chat. How does one uh, tips for world building? How do you? Ooh, good question. I'd like to know this too. Entry into world building. Tutorial. Give us a tutorial on world building. Um, well, it's basically with our things. Um, you know, Matt and I have a have a tendency to get really ahead of ourselves, um, and we'll we like to make things up like way too far in advance so we'll make up like when we made up hatchet field we made up black friday guy who didn't like musicals and nerdy prudes must die all at the same time um so we knew that certain characters were coming in in future shows so like grace chastity we knew was going to be the the lead of uh nerdy prudes so we said oh well let's mention her in guy who didn't like musicals we did it no. Oh, sorry. did we do? It? Oh, oh, sorry. 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 Keep going. Sorry. Keep going. World building. <laughs> sorry. Um, so it really just comes with uh, making up too mu too much stuff at, at one time, and you go like, okay, well, I know what's coming, so I'm able to put little details in it th throughout. I, I would say when you're building your world, you want to plan, but don't so rigidly plan it out that there is no room for exploration or to to be able to follow your whims yeah because if you make if you make up a world and it is too strictly planned out 
you're going to get really bored really quick because suddenly all of the excitement is gone. So I would say build in some flexibility. But also when you say that generally you write a story first, then the world follows that initial story uh, or not? Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, story, the story dictates everything. Um, right. So usually, especially when when Matt and I are making up a series like this, we want to make sure that each one stands on its own two feet and and is its own thing. Like I think when in Hatchetfield with guy who didn't like musicals, Black Friday and Nerdy Prudes, you could watch any one of those things without watching the other ones and it would make sense to you. And we, we designed it that way. So we definitely when we're making up these worlds we try to make them loose enough to so that any story that we make up can fit within it so yeah. like here's, when, here's you were, when, you were, when you were writing guy there was no was the initial plan was just this one musical right it wasn't the the world of hatchetfield didn't come with the original idea did it like as a it great did. It, it did. We, because we made up nerdy prudes must die first oh, right, and, right right um and then we and we made up Black Friday, and then we really cracked Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals last out of, out of those three. But when we made up Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals, we were like, this should be the first one because it's um, the easiest one to write, and it's uh, it's a really good idea for just a musical, for just a standalone musical. So we um, we we did that one, but uh, yeah, we that's why they we they talk about Hatchetfield so much. Really, if it weren't setting up Hatchetfield, you wouldn't have had to mention the name of the town that they live in so many times. Right. Right. Yeah. We probably also, if we weren't setting up Hatchetfield, uh, McNamara's entire scene might not be necessary. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But we wrote, but we specifically wrote him in because we said, this guy's coming back for Black Friday. So we need a whole scene about him and how great he is. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. so, yeah, and we um, we we knew we loved McNamara, which is why Paul says in the show he goes, he was a great man. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's like you yeah. talked to him for two minutes, and it's not like McNamara was that man. nice to him. We just liked McNa McNamara. Yeah. yeah, he was gonna kill Paul. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 He was a great, man. but um, but he was uh, a great man. yeah. Uh, Jeff, a, a song. Uh, that was great any for, any uh, tips on writing songs, Jeff? Yes, Jeff. Uh, songwriting. Sure. Uh, I'd say number one tip is you got to follow your ears. It's like you've got to say yes to everything you hear, and as you say yes to everything you hear, you're gifted more stuff. I think a lot of writers. I think this is a true music or words. We shut down our ideas that come to us way too quickly. And what you're doing is you're telling your muse or whatever to stop giving you ideas. But if you start, if you just say yes to everything that comes with you, even if it's bad, it's going to be bad at first. You got to start by saying yes, let it come. You go, oh, I like that. I like that. But the, the point is you say yes to things you hear, uh, dialogue or music, you'll get more of it. And eventually good stuff will come. So follow your ears. There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Nice. That was beautiful, Jeff. Oh, that's beautiful. That was really beautiful. awesome. Um, yeah. For real. That's wonderful. Uh, so where are we at, at our at our Kickstarter total right now? We got about seven hundred more dollars to go. Seven, only seven hundred more dollars to go <laughs> to unlock the song. Uh, so we've got about forty five minutes left on the stream, and we've got including this demo that uh, we're about to unlock one, two, three, four more demos that we can play. Can we unlock them all in the next 45 minutes? That's going to be yes. the question. Can uh, I ask a question? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I had an idea for uh, a possible stretch goal, but I just wanted to know if people who watch are interested in this kind of thing. If like Star Kid playing D&D &D is something that people would get excited for or be interested in that could be us we could hire there's a dm i know who's really really good who we can hire for it um and he'll write something for us uh but that's if that's something that people are excited about that could be a, a stretch goal that we might reveal later yes uh, yes this is um this is uh 
something that we'd love your feedback in the chat. Um, your ideas for the sort of things that you would love to see us, you know, kind of do on these streams. Like John said, this idea of organizing a D and D game, we would try and do it right. Uh, where we would have a, a dungeon master come in and kind of be, uh, guiding us through a, uh, a nice D and D game. So and I think it would be live too. So it would be. You know, it wouldn't be over. Everyone would be live in person performing it and rolling dice. So just keep, you know, keep an eye on something like that. If that's, let us know, comment, and if that's something that you're interested in, um, we'll, yeah. we'll make it happen. Yep. Um, so if that looking... last stream is going to be 12 hours, so we got to fill it with yeah, something. Yeah, we got to fill we something, but we, but, but we want to, but we want to do it right. We'll get the, like a really yeah. good DM to come in. And, and build something for us and yeah so it's look yeah. it's looking like everybody's saying yes everybody's saying yes 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 please, please okay good. great good so we'll look, in, we'll look into that um another thing uh that we we actually never really finished going through our reward tiers yes um oh, yeah. so let's uh let's try and um get through our uh, talk about the oh. remaining reward tiers here um so we've got Yes. So, we have we have our map of the lands that are. We talked about it. It's so big and beautiful that it crashed my computer uh, just opening it. So uh, you can get that at seventy five dollars. Uh, and you, uh, in a, in addition to that map, you will get everything uh, everything beneath this. So you will get your name in the credits. You'll get the behind the scenes featurette. You'll can get the composer demo album. You'll get access to the pre sale. To the tickets and you will get this beautiful art print um so we've got that going on the next one is a is as oh, a classic tried and true classic is a um is the sweatshirt is the cinderella's castle kickstarter sweatshirt at 150 dollars um so this is again we're we're going for uh quality with these and we're going for trying to create something that's really fun and um and cozy super can comfortable super comfortable yeah yeah i can hear you everyone can hear me i think yeah, you're coming together. Here. okay awesome. great am i frozen again or no oh uh, i was no, slightly no, frozen no, but we can yeah but vocally you're beautiful wonderful uh i've never sounded better you've never sounded uh, better yeah all right uh so um and these uh, sweatshirts are, we have, uh, a design by, uh, Jen Lang, uh, Matt and I's sister. Um, so it, they're these beautiful, really fun, uh, graphic, beautiful sweatshirts. And, what are the uh, size ranges on the sweatshirts, by the way, I've seen that a couple of times. I just wanted to check the size ranges. Yeah. I think are it's any like... size, right? Okay. Yeah. I think it's. Yeah, I think it's, it's small through extra large. I'll double check. Yes, yeah. I, I I think it's small through extra large or, um, will uh, yeah, it's we're, you know, we're ordering these from Ann Arbor T-shirt Company, so um, they are our long, long, long time collaborators on merchandise. Um, so it any any size you you can get through them. I think will be available to, to all of this. Um, so, in, and so then in addition to that sweatshirt, you will be getting your name in the credits. You will be getting the behind the scenes featurette, the composer demo album, access to the presale ticket and the map of the lands that are. So you will be getting all of that. And you'll also be getting the show because mainly you're also paying for Cinderella's castle to exist and for it to be on YouTube. Um, and, uh, we, we really appreciate that. So we have our sweatshirt, uh, at $300, we have our Sir Hoplot plushie. Um, this, uh, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. We're yes. currently in the design process for the Sir Hoplot plushie. Um, it is going to be, you know, if you liked the wiggly doll, um, this is going to be, uh, a similar sort of size to the Wiggly doll, and it's uh, going to be a nice little stuffed animal of Sir Hopalot, who I think we're all going to love. Uh, he's a, he's a noble knight figure, and you can have one of your very own. Um, 
uh, so that's at three hundred dollars, um, and you will be getting everything that we've mentioned before, plus the Sir Hopalot plushie, and then on top of that, we have our five hundred dollar tier, which is our our poster that is going to be signed by the cast. And uh, John, do you want to talk a little bit about the poster that we're having commissioned for the show? Yeah, the poster is being designed by this really incredible artist named Dan Quintana. Uh, please feel free to find uh, find him on social media. It's, it's uh, Quintana Art um, on Instagram, uh, and his his artwork is really like dark and beautiful, and he's really going to try to capture that labyrinth like '80s vibe of uh, for the show. So it really is going to be kind of a, a unique like piece of artwork that will uh, be signed by everybody uh, in the cast. So um, he's, he's working on it hard. We're there. Um, Did we do it? Yeah, 324. Oh my God. Wonderful. Neon, Wonderful. neon. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. Here we go. So, so, um, so this next song that we're going to be listening to is a song called Neon. It is the song that uh, Ella and the Prince uh, share when they're at the ball. Sight unseen, I stand before you, witness to a luminescent goddess. Uh, fields of green, my eyes are served their purpose. Will I risk their blindness? You walk in love, you know that neon light. No sense in turning. This ember, my want for you is now my flame. If I see it, can I touch it? If I feel it, will I love it? James to be rising up out of a pool in slow motion. Just, yeah, yeah. Just water. Okay, no yeah. Yeah. I have a long nice. wig. Yeah. Forty yeah. But only for this song. Just the, I have a wig for just yeah. this song. <laughs> just let's, just yeah, let's let's try and get that pool. Let's try and get that pool. Dirty and, yeah. and that is and that was just a preview of the song. It's it'll be longer, it'll but be again, longer some of these that. songs are cut for <laughs> for spoilers and and all that kind of stuff. And oh. we don't want to just show you the entire show. No. So, yeah. so this is really um, important actually i need to mention something yeah i said i would reveal this at 324 this is the tea that we're drinking this is um it's called william shakespeare's literary tea and it's nice. uh it's very good it's black tea and um it's got rose uh kongu black tea lavender petals rose petals rosemary and and bergamot oil all right bergamot oil oh, everybody in the cast uh, checked out all right so, Wonderful. Ooh. That's so. Somebody up, there, somebody up there. Pledge. Someone, someone say something, someone somebody say up their pledge. They loved the tea content. Oil. So people were asking for the tea. I had, a, I had a Christmas party exchange one the salt that you had, and I use it every single day. It's not salt. It's, it's like a Mediterranean it's, salt it's, rub. It's not salt. I use it every day. So I got so John much has impeccable taste. I got so much flack at this oh, star kit at this gift Ooh. exchange. Everybody was like, yeah, yeah. John brought spices. And the thing is, is this got so much value for this. Anyway, I'm sorry, this is not on the yeah, yeah, right. I'm gonna, I I'm gonna chapter than last time. <laughs> I think it's great. I think yeah, yeah, that's really good. Where did where did you get that tea, John? Where'd you get that tea? 
Where did I get what? The candle or the tea? Or the Where did you get the tea? It was a gift from my mom. Where did your mom get the tea? I think there's a British uh, tea store in Lawrence, Kansas. If you are, a, you know, University of Kansas, University of Kansas, KU Lawrence, and it's uh, I forgot the name of the store. I think it's called Brits. All right, everybody, go go to Brits. Get that tea, go get the tea. Oh, we, you know, okay. I I saw in the chat that people were, were talking about the tea at at that. I thought you were talking about a secret. A secret? Well, that's what I thought too. Yes. I, thought was, I thought you were going to spill the tea, but it was real tea. Yeah, Look at you, Nick. You better be hip with the wind. Yeah, Nick. Come on, Nick. Bring it on. We want the lore. Lore drop, John. Figure All right, fine, fine, there fine. Was fine. Some, there was some spill the tea, and then there was some tea reveal request. Spill so the tea some, tea. It was all the tea. All the tea. Um, okay, I'll, the I'll, tea. I'll think of a secret and then I'll spill it. Yes. So we got three more song reveals, right? Or three more demos, right? Yes, yes. we have three more demos and we have about 30 minutes. So yeah, should we do the next one at silver? Or Let's do the next one at silver. Let's do the next one at silver to commemorate our silver budget. So this is in less than $700. We are going We're to so not close. only. What happens at the silver budget? What what we, happens? We Our heads slow are away. We yeah. yeah. Um. We so anyway, uh, the, the, <laughs> the silver budgets are. You know, these budget tiers are going to unlock or uh, uh, are going to give us the ability to create um, more in depth set, more in depth lighting, more in depth costumes. We can pay everybody a little bit more, which would be great. Um. So. Uh, just to give everyone a, a, a basic idea of where this money goes, um, I actually pulled up the budget for uh, Nerdy Prudes Must Die. Um, let me... See, there's uh, the tea. This is what I want, math. That's let's tea. Numbers. Let's get some numbers going on in here. Behind um, the scenes. Yeah, okay, the so, <laughs> so just to kind of... I don't want to bore everybody with looking at a spreadsheet right now. Uh, please, so star kids please give star me the spreadsheet, kids spreadsheet. Please. Okay, do you want to see a spreadsheet? Yeah! yeah. 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 I just blew out the microphone. I know. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> let's see it. Let's see a spreadsheet. Oh. Here. Okay. So, this is going to give you an idea of the cost of one of these shows. And this so, was just for Nerdy Fruits. This was just for Nerdy yeah. Fruits Must Die. So. <laughs> This is going to give you an idea. We had a projected cost and we had an actual total of what things cost. So oh, the scenery, Lord. our budget for the scenery in, in Nerdy Fruits Must Die was $6,000. Um, and it ended up costing $7,079. Uh, and if you remember Nerdy Fruits Must Die, our set was, you know, those Beautiful, beautifully painted, beautifully made, but you know, those kind of hanging fabric and then that little uh riser. And uh, we also had a bunch of school chairs. The school chairs are actually not even included in that seven thousand dollar budget. Uh, the school chairs each cost a hundred dollars. Um, so you wouldn't think about it, but the school chairs actually added a thousand dollars onto that budget. So, um Seven thousand dollar budget will uh, basically get you almost the nerdy prudes must die set. Um, uh, for costumes, we had a budget of five thousand five hundred dollars. It ended up costing six thousand eight hundred fifty-two dollars. Uh, and again, in nerdy prudes must die, people were wearing things like jeans and a t-shirt and um, varsity jackets and things like that. This time around, we are going to be trying to, you know, create this magical, this, uh, this uh, kind of, you know, this fantasy world. So the costuming, as much money as we can raise for that costuming, the, the better. And yes, for people who are asking about the school chairs, yes, every single school chair that you sit on, that you take completely for granted when you go to school, oh cost a hundred dollars each chair. You you don't think about it, and they oh, seem we like silver. we, we made our silver, silver budget. Oh, we made our silver oh, budget. Oh my gosh! Awesome. Spreadsheets. Spreadsheets work. Yes. Transparency, Transparency works. Transparency. Okay. Great. So, Nick, we're gonna. Yeah, what's up? Oh, the, 
I just saw the performer project it was 44, but it's 64. And I'm just so <laughs> what curious. happened? What yeah. happened? Yeah. COVID, right? COVID? So this is actually, this is a big thing. So um, it, it, oh. we're, we'll get to paying our, we'll get to playing our demo right after we talk about this. Exactly. So you will take a look here. Our performer estimated budget was $44,000. And this is with paying each one of these performers $3,500 each. So this is not a situation where these performers are making, you know, like $30,000 each for this, these shows. Uh, we pay everybody about $25 an hour, about $100 per performance and per rehearsal. So just that, we had an estimated budget of $44,575. It ended up costing $20,000 more than that because of equity fees. Because oh. this was something that we were not anticipating when we went into doing the show. And then because now... Again, it's just uh, another thing why these shows get more and more expensive is that as we all advance in our careers and hopefully everybody becomes a part of equity and everybody does this, this is all good. Union, the uni Being a part of the union is good. Being paid this sort of productions, it's all good, but it all costs money. So in order to pay everybody that 44,000 whatever dollars, it costs $20,000 extra from the company because there are things that you have to pay into like, you know, healthcare yeah. programs and insurance programs and things like that. So this was something that we, um, that we did not, uh, anticipate a hundred percent. So anyway, yeah, it's, it yeah. seems like a lot of money until you see where the money goes and it just goes like fast 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 it just it, disappears yes yeah, so uh so you know just just really briefly you know going through this you'll see that our our actual cost our our estimated total was three hundred thousand dollars for um for the for the expenses for nerdy prudes it ended up costing two hundred forty five thousand dollars just to do nerdy prudes must die um wow. and again this does not include this doesn't in, this budget doesn't even include uh many things um something that is not included in that budget is uh matt and i took no fee for writing the show um in in that initial in that initial budget hey we love you guys so, uh, rock and roll because you so, guys are so we, you know, when we do one of these shows, we make our money on the back end and it takes several years of development and writing in order to make one of these shows. So, uh, that'll just give you an idea of kind of how much one of these shows costs. And remember that for Cinderella's castle, we are trying to create this, you know, this magical fantasy world, which is going to be a little bit more of a challenge than, uh, something like nerdy prudes, which takes place in modern day in a school, everybody's in modern dress and things like that. So this time we're going to be looking into costume shops where we can rent things like there are guards in the show. Are the guards going to be in suits of armor? What 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 is that going to look like? Uh, so we, this is just things to consider. But let's do something fun right now and yeah. listen and I listen. To that, was it. No, that was actually really helpful and fun. Um, anything? Any introduction to the next song, Nick, or just want to go yeah. into it? Yeah. So the next song is called "Ever After." This is a song in which uh, Ella is contemplative. Uh, I don't want to give okay. too much away. Sounds good. But, uh, there we go. Ella's <laughs> contemplating. Just like Cause it's the rain made for I've been bracing for years Has living with pain eroded the last of my fears Am I ready? Keep rise kings fall when hope dies is a queen called will it ever after happily will it ever after happily if it feels like a burden i suppose i'm on the right path 
a really nice song again and did you hear how contemplative it was it was yeah she be thinking, she be thinking. oh yeah, yeah. Oops. yes like yes ella's thinking about some big things something big and heavy so things again i had a we, question yeah sorry uh about the budget yeah <laughs> um the the it said 30 dollars for props yes that's obviously um a lie that's uh, that uh, certain things are not even included fully in the, accounted in, for fully accounted for. There are certain things Some... that, um, that I'll pay for, um, my, myself, um, and, uh, I account for things elsewhere, so but, funny. um, no, the black book was not included in that because the black book for those of you that don't know was actually commissioned for working boys for an early version of working boys. Um, we, and, and the black book certainly cost more than $32. So, um, <laughs> yeah. it, it costs a lot more than that. Um, but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful work of art. And Meg Lloyd, who created the black book, did such an amazing job. Um, right. yes, it was created for an early draft of working boys. Uh, but working boys, then, uh, we, we wrote that version of working boys, um, pre pandemic. Um, and then during the pandemic, uh, we started doing nightmare time, and a lot of elements from Working Boys got lifted out of Working Boys and put into some of the Nightmare Time stories. And then uh, we even ended up lifting the summoning uh, from Working Boys and put it into uh, Nerdy Prudes Must Die, um, and in including the Black Book. Awesome. So, I have, have another two question. More, two more songs. Yeah. We have yeah, two more two songs. More we have we have and we have 20 minutes uh so let's do the next one at what do we say what do we think what are we 326 what? or 325 right now 327 327 three the 327 all right 327 we can do it um we've got 20 minutes left 
let's see how many more of these uh, song demos we can unlock. We've got two more demos to play for you. Um, this next one, uh, again, I don't 100% want to give too much away, uh, but it's a very nice song. <laughs> and, and, what's, and what can you say about the last song? All right, so this song that uh, that we're right that we unlock, I really can't say anything about it because it would be giving too much too many spoilers away. I can't tell you where it is in the show. I can't tell you exactly. I can't mm -hmm. tell you anything. But the last song is the song that the Fairy Queen of Sweet Dreams uh, sings to Ally. Oh, unlock it. So that I is like the, and that's not this song. That's the that's the next song. We got two more. So yeah. if we get to uh, 327, um, we've got, you know, a little less than 20 minutes to unlock these two songs. So um, if you want to hear uh, the uh, the Fairy Queen song to Ella, um, we, we'll get to that one. That'll be the last one we do because that one's kind of a big one. Yeah. And again, these songs are out of order and we're not playing all of them because again we don't yes. want to spoil the show yes <laughs> um, well we're into the kind of final push 18 minutes what would you like to talk about for these last 18 minutes should we I have a question oh i also have a question after yeah. that. Oh. Oh. um i guess what are you most Jesus Christ. Christ. Are you sure? What production elements like of the live show are you guys most excited about? Like it maybe more of a Nick question if you have like a particular like well, directing um, thing that you're you're envisioning. He or? got there, he could. Yeah. Uh well, uh obviously I'm uh Oh, and people are also asking to finish going through the rewards, which we will do. Um, so uh, the uh, the I'm certainly excited about these puppets and and making these puppets. So, but that's something that I have to do. So it stresses me out. So um, <laughs> the, the things that I'm just purely excited about. Um, I'm really really excited to to see all of these production elements, to see the costumes, um, see the that and see the lighting. Um, I think that it's going to be a lot of fun to see it all come together. I'm curious to see how they synchronize with each other. Um, like I said, the light is uh, ends up being an important element of the show even for the story. Um, so we have um, you know, our set designer and our lighting designer are trying to work in tandem incorporating into so I'm really excited to see how that comes together. I have, a, I have one quick question. Do we have, is there anything you can say about the costumes? Because I know that, that I, I, I mean, like, I, obviously they haven't been designed yet, but I'm, I'm, I assume they'll probably cost more and be more elaborate than the Nerdy Prudes stuff. Yes. Well, uh, well it, it'll, it'll really depend on how much money we raise. You know, yeah. we're, we're doing the show no matter what. Uh, at this right. point, so there'll be. <laughs> yeah. It's a blood pack. Well, here's 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 the thing about the costumes is that if we are purchasing all of this period piece, it period pieces, it could get astronomically expensive incredibly quickly. Like you'll blow past ten thousand dollars be before you blink. So uh, yeah. we're hoping that we can get access to costume warehouses and rent stuff that makes sense yeah yeah so we're oh, we're so hoping that will help keep the cost down I'll, I'll be able to certainly more in-depthly answer your question after sunday which will be our first yeah. production after tomorrow where we're going to have a production meeting and talk about all of these things and maybe at some point we'll bring on the designers um, to have them speak a little bit about these elements of the show. Because this is only the second live stream of the campaign. There are three more after this one. So, uh, so and what are the, we'll themes of, the themes of the next live streams? Great okay. question, James. <laughs> That's a great question. So next <laughs> week, uh, we have our For an Age and an Age live stream, where we're going to be talking about the 15-year history of uh, Starkid Productions. We're going to take a look at, back at 
at, at kind of the different ages that StarKit has gone through, like the the Michigan years where we were all doing our the shows at uh, on the U of M campus, the Chicago years, all of that, yeah, and history. into the Hatchet Field eras and things like that. And we'll be talking about memories of all these shows and looking ahead at future shows possibly and so we'll see so we'll take a look at that and then um on uh the week after that we're going to be taking a pit stop in hatchet field hatchet field is a series that we certainly love a lot so we're just going to take up uh some time to talk about it and uh possibly unlock some uh hatchet fieldy goodies and uh you know we just did nerdy prudes must die so we got to do deathmatch round two right yeah we go i want to do, yeah. <laughs> do deathmatch 2.0 and now it can include the now it can include the nerdy prudes characters um also i think we're going to change the rules to where last time uh we only included one character per actor, but I think we will Everyone. include more. Yeah, we'll include more people. And woman. some people... <laughs> woman woman yeah. might sneak in there, but the, the reigning, the reigning <laughs> champion last time, uh, Xander, has to step out because he's too, yeah. powerful. Oh, wait, what? What? too powerful. Which, which oh. gives... Which gives That's Grace odd. Chastity, who was who was voted the, oh, the no. we found out was the second most deadly person in Hatchet Field. She gets another shot at the belt. So yeah, we'll because see. you know now we've seen Nerdy Prudes Must Die. So now you're you're fully aware of what Grace is capable of. Um, and you know, last death match didn't include you know Max Yeagerman and things like that. Oh, so, that's crazy. Um, yeah. Uh, a thing can that I would also be Max Yeagerman alive though, or can it be oh, Max Ghost? dead? Great question. Because yeah. Ghost Max uh, is a completely different thing. Yeah, very different. Maybe maybe we'll do both of them. Who knows? Thank you. Um, Who knows? A thing that I'd also be curious to talk about. This will be obviously hypothetical, but I think it'd be interesting to talk about who would beat who amongst the Lords in Black. Uh, yes, well. oh. uh, because uh, you know the Lords in Black are obviously immortal. They 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 Why in some ways like cannot it? die. Uh, but it, but who who would get who would win and and how would they do it? I think that'll be interesting to talk about. Uh, so we'll be doing our Hatchetfield stream, and then the final stream will be our finale stream. That is our twelve hour. Uh, marathon stream where we're going to be doing various different activities, talking about the show and kind of bringing everything uh, to a close. All right. So um, right now we're at 325. Uh, so close. 659. Uh, so we're less than, you know, $1,400 away from the next song, which is um, it's really good. I can't tell you anything about it, but it's great. <laughs> it's um but i can tell you this one this is the one that jeff wrote that is kind of inspired by like a gospel uh it kind of a gospel -y sound to it i think and it's you can't say be... who sings it no we, no wow. it'll it'll ruin the whole show <laughs> it'll spoil the whole show for you if you know who is singing it um so we've got that <laughs> We've got Good. that going on. And then and then there's even another there's even another song beyond that. So if you want to hear these two songs, we've got about eleven minutes. Let's see if we can get it up to even three twenty seven is our first goal. So, so, um, so if so if you haven't so if you haven't backed, now's a good time to go and back the campaign. If you um it if you have backed and you want to you know, up your pledge a little bit. We'd love to, we'd, we'd love that. You can manage your pledge at any time. You can change your pledge level. You can add a few dollars onto your pledge, wh whatever you want to do. Um, so you can go check that out. And uh, so uh, we've got that going on. And then what was I going to say in the last few minutes, maybe we even hear from the chat of, um, I think we're getting to a point where we might be considering some add-ons some add-on prizes for the for the campaign so um we've got some things that we are that we're considering of of adding on to the campaign for add-ons but uh you know if anybody out there watching has any suggestions for what sort of things you'd like to see as add-on rewards um let us know what, what, i saw people talking about the sweatshirt pins 
Oh, like as an add-on. Stickers. Instead of uh, anything so else you can think of. Um, yeah, whatever you swords. Bumper stickers. <laughs> yeah, Bumper well, stickers. we'll see. We'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can we can Full pull together. Some board. of this. Yeah, some of this stuff you find you you think it'll be easy, and then you find out that it's just prohibitively expensive, uh, and then you got to think about shipping and uh, all all these everything's expensive, and so we we just got to be careful that we don't accidentally make prizes that end up taking money away from the show. Right. right. Because <laughs> yes, that so yes, that is a big thing. You got to be careful Ooh. when you do one of these things. All right, so we're still at we're still okay. we're still at um, just under fourteen hundred to unlock the next song. So and you've got nine minutes left. Hey, if everyone that's watching right now, there's roughly about what two thousand. Okay, if everyone watching right now just pledged one one dollar. <laughs> just one dollar. One dollar. Coffee's bad for you. Don't have okay. coffee. We would make it. Oh, we absolutely, absolutely. One dollar. Just one little $1. dollar. Up. A one tiny little dollar. Wait, what, yeah, what, what's the coffee slander? What's that about? Shut, shut up. One dollar. One dollar. The one dollar. Also, can I also say, Nick, this yeah. is just selfish. Uh, I did see somebody said in the chat, tarot cards. Oh. That would be. Oh, that sounds expensive. expensive. Oh. It does sound expensive. You're right. Cool. We'd have to. It sounds. Yeah. More than you would. Yeah. The where funny. that gets tricky is what that where that gets tricky is. It's like Who's 30 ready to pay art to yeah. yeah paying for 30 pieces of art you'd go yeah, okay that would cost you know Never however mind. many thousands of dollars and then um uh and then you would have to wait um 30 months for yeah for the true. art to be delivered <laughs> 30 months uh, a, a card a month all right as long as we're yeah. making selfish add-ons what about a v-neck t-shirt variant of the sweatshirt okay. oh for jeff just for, for jeff for me just jeff, one uh, yeah. just one v-neck well, yeah, just for Jeff. If you buy the add-on, Jeff will get the T-shirt. Yeah. Could you make yeah, the Jeff. sweatshirts an add-on so people could buy extra sweatshirts for friends and family, like individually? Could that be something since you're already making them anyways? Comment in the YouTube and also comment yeah, on the Kickstarter page. Yeah, uh, about this stuff. I don't yeah. know if anyone wants that, but saw somebody say something about. Can we buy yeah. more T-shirts? Yeah, yes. there you go. Yeah, it, we'll yeah. we'll think about it. I guess, yeah. Think about it. We're so again, close. We, again, we just have to be careful because um, it could so quickly become that all of the money goes to making to making yeah, right. Right. instead of the show. The show. So we got to be careful. So no, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yes, yes um, if we're talking about cost of things again, uh, this is this was certainly not reflected in the spreadsheet for Nerdy Fruits Must Die because last time we did a crowdfunding campaign, it was to fund many things. It was to fund not only Nerdy Prudes, but we also funded the Jangle Ball Tour and we also funded the lab projects. So the Stark returns. We did it. We, did it. we had 327, three twenty seven three. We did it. Still going up. Yeah, it's still awesome. going up. We're almost at three twenty eight. We're at three twenty seven. There you go. We're awesome. almost at three twenty eight. Oh, okay. We can play the last two songs. <laughs> oh wow, wow, that really happened. We didn't set the last. Wait, one. it went up to three twenty eight. Oh yeah, yeah, we never set the last one. You're right, you're Let's, right. Never mind. We can play. We can play the next one. Yeah. yeah, but we can play the next song. Uh, so um, let's. Uh, Let's let's go for it. I'm really glad that we that we did it. We can't tell you anything about it. Let's listen to the song. It is called Trappings of Starlight. Ooh. Small, 
But I give it all In trappings of starlight All of the people Will get back together now Sunset and sunrise Fearsome and regal Ashes belie a crown beautiful That's, isn't that a nice song can't tell you anything about who's singing it and yeah uh, can't tell you anything that, about it can't tell <laughs> but, you anything yeah. about it but a really nice song great. um jeff another beautiful song that was again to clarify that was not the fairy queen of sweet dreams song uh no. that is the, that is the next song uh that we were going to unlock um you know what if we if we hit it, we're really only 25 dollars away you know you know oh, what? We are we allowed? Are we just we allowed to go over? The, oh, we hit yeah. it. Yeah, we're we're allowed to we're allowed to go over. Um, so yeah. we because we can stop the stream at any time. We're we're gonna because everyone is has given such amazing support. Um, yeah. we're gonna go a little bit over on this stream, and we're going to play the last song demo that we had to play for you. This is the song that the Fairy Queen of Sweet Dreams sings to and with. Ella Ashmore. Um, awesome. Here we go. It is a song called Ash to Ash. And this is my favorite tea. It is uh, <laughs> Arnie and David's um, oh. Lunar 2024 Year of the Dragon Tea. Oh uh, God, here's like, Ash to Ash. This year's Lady Ashmore danced all alone at night in the thick of wild magic. Lady Ashmore burned at the stake in time for her clan to find. Tragic. 
The flames of ruination take their hold of every soul and every throne. The house of Ashmore, no exception, no. A story so old It's nothing but bones It all turns to ash and ash and dust to dust And there's nothing left but a vengeful lust Hopes are dashed and dashed and dreams are lost When the light goes out only fire is just Just intention for my just intent against your opposition, against my opposition. Use them. The house of Ashmore rises once again. It rises once again. Is that how this ends? Ash to Ash, uh, what a fun way to end the stream. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, in terms of uh, the rewards, we basically got through all of them. The only one that we didn't talk about was the VIP ticket. That's at eight hundred dollars. Um, you can get uh, if you get the eight hundred dollar VIP ticket uh, tier, you can get everything below that plus a pair of tickets uh, to come and see the show. And you'll have early access to the theater and early access to the Starkid merchandise store that we'll set up outside of the um, outside the theater. And so, uh, if and the you, best seats, and you get the best seats in the house, and everything um, beneath that too, as well. and everything and beneath every that. We had some one of a kind uh, rewards, but they all sold out. Um, so we'll uh, so we'll uh, so we got that. Thank you all so much for uh, contributing to the campaign. Please keep sharing, keep spreading the word about the project. Again, 
you've now seen a little taste of just how expensive some of these things can get. So uh, the more money we raise, the better the show can be. Thank you all so much for making it such an incredible uh, crowdfunding campaign thus far. And we look forward to the next uh, several weeks and the next, and we've got three more live streams coming up and thank you so much. And we hope to see you there. See you next week. See you next week. All right. Week. See you next week. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Here we go.